Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Man, we have a power show for you tonight. Dave Schrader from Paranormal 60. Yeah, television, radio, and now author. This guy just does it all. Does it all. He needs Super Bowl rings on each hand in order to, you know, show off his goods. He really does. Dirty Filth is here. He's going to draw another great cartoon for us. And the best part about tonight, we have each and every one of you. We have and be in the gold medal position. Race fan in the silver, the lovely and talented Kira with a bronze medal tonight. Laura Lobbs and Y2K2MI. How are you? Y2K will be signing autographs after the show. Line up to the left of the studio, if you don't mind, to the left of the studio. Tim Mothman and his goatee. Roy Boy, race fan, and Chris716. Good to see you. Robert Lamoth, Eternity Eternal, Sandra Kincaid. Thank you for coming on in. Caroline Wesson, FL Girl, welcome to SOR Chat. Thank you for joining us. I, Laura Lobbs, and Lulu Bell. Laura Clashius, welcome to SOR Chat. How are you? T-Bone, Mark G, how you doing? Mark G will be signing autographs after the show as well. Line up to the right of the studio, if you don't mind, to the right of the studio. Mama Susan, number 16 in your program, starting at right wing from Stockholm, Sweden. Lars Janssen, purple-haired pixie Lara. Shelley, how are you? Hello there, Chris. Teen, how are you? Thank you for coming on in. Dear Slayer, good to see you. And as we continue on with our roll call here, we say hello next to Digger Dog. And who else is here? Scrolling on down. Lots of conversation going on. Wildberry, good to have you back. And who else is here? <clears throat> Paul Demon, Phil the Stalker, Dusk1962, welcome to SOR Chat. And Belenia, my man, how are you? To my crown, welcome to SOR Chat. Thank you for joining us. Rock and Rory, Stephanie Hawkins Lynch, welcome to SOR Chat. Tim Felland, how you doing? Operation Shutdown. W. David Page, Doug Shelby is here. The Doug Shelby has arrived, which means we can officially start this show. Audrey Suma, Mary Hirsch, welcome to SOR Chat. Thank you for coming on in. Scrolling on down, we say hello to Patricia Giselli. Welcome. Mama Catherine, Mwah! I love you. How are you, my dear? I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Pam Harris, thank you for coming on in. And who else is next? Ozzy Ozzy, good to see you. Paramarv, thanks for joining us. Joanne Luera, welcome to SOR Chat. Jimmy Gonzalez, nice to see you. Malou, how are you, Skip to Malou? Thank you for coming on in. And who else do we have here? Dizzy F and Reed, what's happening? Thank you for coming on in. Kathy Pat Mooney, welcome to SOR Chat. And who else is here? Scrolling on down, we have Giannis Roast. Welcome to SOR Chat. I prefer Silent J. I really do. It might be Janice, but I prefer Giannis. It just sounds so much better. No, I'm teasing. Yo Mama, welcome to SOR Chat. Al Gray over on Twitch, Marty Burback. Thank you for coming on in as we continue with our roll call. Ben Pay from the UK. Good morning, my fellow Commonwealther. Thank you for joining us. And who else is here? Toe Tag. Ross Reichert. Welcome, or Richard. Welcome to SOR Chat. Guy Calgary. Nice to see you. And Timothy Fellon again. And who else is here? Scrolling on down. Tammy Lynn. Welcome to SOR Chat. 
Cobra Cos, welcome to the SOR chat. Lots of newbies here. Paul Perez, good to see you back. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Winnie Schrader in our chat room. How are you? Scrolling on down here. Azariana Trudell, welcome to SOR chat. And Joanne Stewart, welcome from Canada. Where in Canada are you? Let me know. I'm in British Columbia, way up in the province. Start the radio side. Hello to everybody listening in on the radio and podcast side of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott, and you are listening to Spaced Out Radio. Dave Schrader is our guest. We're going to get all paranormal with him tonight, and we are awaiting Bill WD-40. There he is, Bill WD-40, already lubing us up for tonight's show, because you always want to go into a show nice and smooth. No rigid this here. No, you got to go smooth. Noble Patrick, nice to see you. And here we go. Foxy Joe, welcome back. Frank and Sean, welcome to SOR Chat. Scrolling on down, Violet Strange, welcome. Donnie Cho, thanks for coming on in. And Jerry Carter, thank you for joining us. Wild Man's Mom, thank you for joining us again. And... to you listening around the world this my friends is spaced out radio i am your host dave scott sitting in the captain's chair of sor headquarters we welcome you to tonight's show on our terrestrial affiliates around north america digitally on odyssey radio talk stream live and kpnl all of our archives are free join us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio do old davy the favor hit that subscribe button you can follow us on twitter at spaced out radio instagram at spaced out radio show and on tiktok at spaced out radio our website spacedoutradio.com we have a plethora of features for you rock out to bumblefoot read the news wire check out our swag as well tonight's show is brought to you by chive charities help make the world 10 percent happier by visiting chive charities today you can find them on our website it's a power show of paranormal tonight famed radio host dave schrader joins us to talk about his brand new book we'll get to that momentarily then in hour number three steve stockton from among the missing joins us for another weird story following that the cryptid report with travis williate moostoos all right we always love it when dave schrader comes on spaced out radio not only because he's one of the very few hosts that are more handsome than me he has a very tight goatee even though you can't see that in radio land we love dave around here he has a brand new book out that we are going to share with you tonight in the stories of it called Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. He's got one of the best podcasts and radio shows out there, along with his YouTube channel called Paranormal 60. And man, we are always glad when Dave Schrader joins us here on the show. Mr. Dave Schrader, always a pleasure to have you on Spaced Out Radio, my man. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm sorry. You just... You just caught me reading my new book, The Theater of the Mind, but oh, oh I'll my. set that down because that's not what we're here to discuss. Oh, oh, okay. You know, I wasn't sure about that, but you know, it, it's always good to do a little bit of self-promotion there. You know, how you been, my friend? I've been great, buddy. I appreciate you having me back on. It's been a while. I'm looking forward to our conversation tonight. We got to get you back over on the P60 as well so we can, uh, have, we still got to do that crossover night where we're just a whole night of Dave's. You know, I, that's a lot of power, Dave, right there. We should man. call that Dave's in the night. Ooh, mm -hmm. that, that actually works for me. Yeah, that, that really works for me. You know, yeah, anytime you want to, man. I, I love doing the crossovers and, and having you on here because the one thing that uh, I, I like about you, Dave, is there's no there's no BS about it. There's no bull that is there that needs to be crossed you you tell the paranormal stories as they are you you're not afraid to go into any other target you've been doing this a long time and for our audience members especially on our terrestrial radio stations who may not know who you are they may recognize your voice from being on coast to coast am all those years and of course paranormal 60 now which is highly popular in the paranormal realm you just got it going on man 
it, I try, you know, it's been something that's been a passion of mine. My entire life is radio and loving the paranormal the way I do and finding a way to bring them both together is, is both a miracle and uh, a, a godsend. So I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share that and then be invited on the programs like this to continue to open up to new uh, viewers and listeners worldwide. For people who may not know your background, mm -hmm. why do you love this subject so much? Why, why, why so passionate about it? You know, maybe there's a lot of different things and I, I've tried to break it down a few times wondering where my fascination comes from. I first attributed it to the fact that, you know, as a very young child, I had an overwhelming fear of death. I mean, I remember not wanting to go to bed at the age of five or six because I was afraid I wouldn't wake up. And that seems pretty young to have that kind of fear and, and thought process going on. So I thought maybe that was part of it. Now, my mom and aunt, who were big influences in my life, both of them were voracious readers of Stephen King and Dean Koontz and anything by Dr. Hans Holzer or Ed and Lorraine Warren. So they always had some spooky book about. And, you know, I, I kind of look at those angles as the exposure was there. And all of these pieces were just kind of in my world. I grew up in a haunted house. I had paranormal experiences with my grandmother's ghost at a very early age. And, and it's just snowballed and always been there. But I, I think part of it is the escapism for me. That uh, as, a, as a child, I was brutally bullied for a long time. And uh, I think that finding places to take myself out of the here and now and allow my mind to wander. I had comic books growing up, right? And books of Edgar Rice Burroughs and John Carter of Mars and Tarzan and Lone Ranger and and books like that, that I would feed my mind. And as I got older, we start to, to get a little bit further away from the imagination. And I find that the paranormal re-engages the imagination. It doesn't mean that it's fake or not happening, but it allows the brain to think again in ways that we haven't really engaged since we were children. You've done everything that you could possibly do in this field. You've done television shows. You've done radio. You're now an author of a great new book, and I'll, I'll give the shameless plug here. Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip, Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. You've, you've been there and done it all, Dave. You know, mm -hmm. what, what are you missing? What, what is something that our audience, and maybe even your audience members who are listening in, are are, may not know about you or, or the craft that you spin. You know, I think it, it's a weird kind of dilemma to be in. Part of it feels like I'm so glad I've been immersed in this for so long, but I will tell you now, Dave, I look back and 18 years have gone by in the blink of an eye. And my daughter who was born the year I began doing these things is you know, 17, going to be 18 soon. And, you know, going into her senior year of high school and my children are all kind of moved out and moved on in their lives. So it's really kind of perplexing that, you know, I've been there for a lot, but I've missed so much chasing crazy. But what's really beautiful to me is that many of my children have uh, made comments to me when I've said, you know, I'm really sorry. I feel like I I, I wasn't there enough for you. And they've said, dad, you got to do what you wanted to do. You, you dreamed and you followed that dream. That was a great example. And that helps my heart feel a little bit better about that. And that they know that I was working to give them better lives as well. So uh, I kind of wish I had a time machine. I wish I could go back and relive these last 18 years and pay a little bit more attention to all the things in my life, not just this element of it as much. I, I understand that, you know, and it's funny, I have a daytime job as well. And I, I actually called my boss up today and I said, you know, I'm playing hooky uh, on Thursday. And he goes, why? I said, because I got things to do with my son. So my son, I've already told my son, you're calling in sick. He's only 10. I said, we're ha it's been a lot too long since we had a dad Sunday and uh, we need to do it just to hell with everything and just get it done, you know? I mean, sometimes as a parent, you got to put the job to the side and just go for it. I know exactly what what you're talking about, and I know that you know one of your one of your graces in life is uh, you love being a father, and mm -hmm. I, think, I think we all do. And and grandfather now, of course, much like myself, you know, when you look at it and you look at your family and everything that you've kind of brought around them with these subjects, do they have their own paranormal experiences going on too? 
They do. And they've opened up to me about them. It was really cute. About maybe seven years ago, I had a guest bail out on me last minute, like literally last minute. And my daughter said, well, we'll do the show, dad. And I said, oh yeah. So I, I titled the episode children of darkness and, uh, I let them kind of interview me. I interviewed them about the paranormal. And that's one of my favorite memories of doing the radio show and getting to hear their stories and getting the opportunity to hear them question me on things that they've always wanted to know. But yeah, I think all of my children at one point have had strange experiences take place. And uh, I think because of who I am, it's made it easier for them to deal with and accept. And then they've gone with me to active haunted locations from the Palmer House Hotel to the Stanley Hotel to the Queen Mary Eastern State Penitentiary, um, you know, Joliet State Prison. So they've, they've had a chance to be there hand in hand with me and see the life I lead. And, and they're kind of excited about that. And when they get to have their own experiences at these places is pretty cool. You know, it, there's nothing like having your, your child with you when you're on investigation. Do your kids communicate with spirit or do they have weird things happen like that? They, yeah, they've all had something, you know, when my mom passed away, uh, she made her presence known to my daughters and, um, you know, through dream visitations, she, they, they have had those moments where they know they're not alone and they've felt somebody with them. So it, it has been out there. They have had those kind of experiences. We also, the house we live in now we own, but we were, when we first moved to this area, we were renting a house about three blocks away. And that house was really haunted. It was crazy haunted, just weird stuff happening all the time. Uh, sometimes when I was on, on air live doing my radio show, weird things in the house would happen. I was, you know, I had my studio in my bedroom and Winifred was over working on something in bed, I think knitting or something. And all of a sudden, uh, we just hear the TV in the living room at one o'clock in the morning, just start blaring. And I, I muted my microphone. I said, go find out which one of these idiot kids is up this time of night, blaring a TV like that. So she went trekking out there and nobody there, but the TV's on full blast. So she goes over and she, first she turns the volume down and as soon as she lets go of the button, the volume starts soaring again. So she just turns the TV off, sets the remote down and starts to walk out of the room and the TV goes back on and the volume starts climbing. So oh our first thoughts, mine especially are, you know, if I have a neighbor with a, a similar TV and he's sitting there watching TV at his house and not paying attention and messing around with the remote. He may not even realize that he's messing with the volume of my TV. And so I, I was not real, you know, positive that it was paranormal. But when he went over and unplugged the TV and then the DVD player started opening and shutting and opening and shutting and opening and shutting. And uh, we got that all settled in. It was very strange. And we were talking egregores on another radio show. And as we're talking about this, boom, it sounds like a car hit the side of my house. And we shook and all of the internet went out. And we're like, what the hell was that? So live on air, I'm knocked off the air, completely knocked out. There's nobody else in the neighborhood is out of power. Everybody else's houses are all lit up. Mine's completely black. All internet's gone. Everything's shut down. And then it just came back on about three hours later. Uh, and when we called about it, there was no complaints. There was no explosions. There were no car accidents that caused it. They couldn't figure out what was taking place. But it, it's so I've had those kind of things happen around me. And then my kids have been there to witness some of these things. I love it when you get witnesses. Is that the strangest thing that's happened to you while you're on the air? Um. While no, no, I've I, I was actually doing an interview one night, uh, and this is when I was at the radio station doing darkness radio, and we were talking to oh gosh, her, her name is escaping me now, but she was a famous UFO abductee. Her story was covered almost as much as the uh Betty and Barney Hill story. Is that the Betty, yes, Betty Andreas and Luca, right? So I'm talking to her on the air and her husband, and they're in separate rooms. And as Betty gets done talking, her husband starts to talk and I hear something 
And I go, hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, Betty, did you say something? And she's like, no. And I'm like, are you sure? She goes, yeah, I'm positive. I said, okay. M maybe mumbled something under your breath after he started talking. She's like, no. Okay. So we, we kept doing the interview and I had my producer, Tim, mark that spot. So when we went to commercial, I said, pull that piece up. And he pulled it up. He goes, D, there's nothing there. I'm looking at the wave. There's nothing there. And I said, boost it and listen, man. I heard something. And sure enough, Dave, we play it back. And you hear her end. And as soon as he starts to speak, you hear this voice go, I'm going to kill you. Oh. And it was That's embedded not... in there as they're talking about the high strangeness and weird things in their home. So wow. I... I, I said, guys, I, I have to play this for you. And they were both weirded out by that. So I've had strange experiences like that. I was also doing an episode where I was talking to a guest. And uh, as I'm looking at her and speaking to her, I start seeing something moving in her glasses. They're reflecting something. I'm like, oh, is there somebody else there with you? And she's like, no, why? And I said, there's somebody, uh, a reflection. I could see somebody moving around in the reflection of your glasses. And she got real pale and gaunt and was not thrilled that I was seeing and witnessing these things. Um, but you know, that was another one of those fun moments when you're on air and you're having phenomena take place. You're, you're getting real time EVPs. You're seeing something reflected in the glasses of the guests you're speaking to. And I had guests, listeners that were watching and seeing the exact same thing occurring that I would see at one point, it almost looked like a face was reflected right in her glasses. Uh, and then backed out it was very strange i think two of the strangest things that's happened when i've been on air was number one april 20th 2015 mm -hmm. no i know it's 420 okay everybody always says that i actually had uh i was interviewing a gentleman named harvey craft i don't know if you know him mm -hmm. he's about he was we we're talking buddha okay of all things and he's yapping away and i see something move out the window and I turned my head and look. I put him on mute. I turned my head and look. And God is my witness. There was an alien gray staring at me from the other side of the window. Mm. We named it, That's where the legend of Carl came in. But if you look, our radio audience won't be able to see this. But if you, you look behind me, there's the guitar with that white piece of paper there. Mm -hmm. This is actually a little bit of a sad story. About a year and a half ago... Geez, two years, it'll be two years on the 25th. Hard to believe it's that far. I had a listener in Amsterdam and his, his online name was Ethereal Aura. And we had done the show and we're, we're doing the after show after the radio side ends. We're doing the after show on YouTube. And he comes in and he says, I've come to say goodbye. And we're like, oh, where are you going? Are you going on a holiday? He goes, no, in, in eight hours. I'm no longer going to be of this earth because he had really debilitating disease and he chose doctor assisted suicide. Okay. So he decided that he was going to come spend one of his last eight hours with everybody in our chat room. Wow. And right before he said goodbye, his father was in the room while he's typing to us and, you know, we're telling him we're going to miss him and all this. He couldn't talk anymore. Otherwise I would have given them, the ability to come on the show live and everything like that. It was a sad moment, but I put that sticky note on there on the guitar. And I said, bud, when you're ready from the other side, come say hello. And all you got to do is move that. And about two and a half, three months later, we watched it move on the show. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. That was really cool, man. Really cool. You know, I mean, but that's the power of what we do. You never know what's going to happen in your studio while you're live and when it happens there. I mean, how do you prepare as, as a longtime radio show host and somebody in this? How do you prepare for that awesomeness of when something strange happens when you're on the air? I don't. And then I'm just as flabbergasted. I know when I started the Paranormal 60 a few years ago uh, from this home, my new home, and I'm set up in my living room for this and everybody else leaves while I do the show. They go to their rooms and, and they're quiet for me. And uh, as I was doing the show, talking the one day and this happened on air, people were watching it. All of a sudden my head snapped because somebody leaned out of the kitchen door and looked at me and I saw them full on saw them. 
and I was like, who the, and they moved out and I'm trying to like, just get through with the interview, but I'm like, Whoa, what the hell just happened? So I love having those moments and I'm not ashamed of acting just as shocked as anybody else would in those situations. I don't like being prepared for that. I love having the real in the moment and I try not to be cooler than, you know, than the next kid with my experiences. People say, aren't you afraid? I'm not afraid when I have experiences, but I do get unnerved and there are times they're quite shocking. What shocks you? Do you still get scared? After all the paranormal stuff you have experienced, do you still get scared? I, I, yes. Yeah, of course. You, you have those moments when you feel the hackles go up and something is off and it does not feel good or right. And I've had those moments. And when I filmed in the, the ghost of devil's perch and I had what I believe I walked into a psychic scar of, of a man that was shot to death. Um, I thought I was dying. I really thought, oh my God, I'm going to die while they're filming this TV show because something felt like it ruptured in my solar plexus and I hit the ground clutching my chest and I thought I was dying. I thought I was going out. Um, Cindy thought I was dying. It was pretty bad. So that was terrifying on a whole nother level because I didn't even have a chance to think this is paranormal. But as soon as I got out, had some fresh air, and they got me over to the hospital, I was fine. They ran every test they could on me. And I, I laugh about it because the Butte uh, uh, doctors might want to work a little bit on their bedside manner. Uh, the, uh, the the main doctor that had been working with me walked in. He goes, well, I got to tell you, Dave, I've run every possible test I can on you. And at your age and weight, I thought we were in trouble. But uh, you're clear. Everything's good. All your numbers are right. Your heart sounds good. Your blood gas is and I'm like, oh, but at my age and weight, you thought we were in trouble. <laughs> oh, so, thanks, Doc. Appreciate yeah. that. Oh, yeah. I, I fear, you know, here's, I still have this fear of death, not the way I've, I've had it in the past. Um, I, I did an ayahuasca journey a few years ago. That helped me come to terms with death and helped me, helped alleviate a lot of that fear. But... When my daughter, uh, Ripley, she is a type one diabetic. When we first found out about it, we were doing all we could to, you know, make sure that we were making all the changes and it's, it's scary. And when you're new to it, you don't know how to, you don't know the things you don't know. And I knew one day my, my daughter just woke up. She wasn't feeling well. She'd thrown up a few times. I went in to check in on her and that's normal. I mean, my kids are in three different schools, you know, grade school, middle school, and high school, and they're bringing bacteria home. We are a Petri dish at my house at any given time. And I was worried about her not feeling well. Um, and later on that night, I thought, you know what, let me give her a, a little goose of energy, because I firmly believe when you feel like crap, eat garbage food, because your body needs that energy to to fight what you're up against. So I went and I got her a vanilla shake and some chicken nuggets from McDonald's and brought them into her room. And she's like, thanks dad. And then, uh, I left and it came back about 20 minutes later and there's chicken nuggets strewn down the hall. And I walk in the bathroom and the vanilla shake is sitting there. And the, there's a couple of chicken nuggets on the counter and my daughter, and I go, what the hell? And I walk in, I go, Ripley, what the hell's wrong with you that you just, and she sat up and just gave me this look. Like she had no clue who I was. Oh my. And I said, I go, Ripley. And she just looked at me and I said, what's my name? And she just stared and I go, Ripley, stop screwing around. What's my name? Say my name. And she just stared at me and, and you could tell there was lights were on. Nobody was home. I scooped her up in my arms and called my aunt who was also a diabetic to ask for uh, clue of what was going on. And she goes, is that the dog panting? And I said, no, that's Ripley. She said, immediately get her to the hospital. She's in ketoacidosis or whatever. Yeah. And I, I rushed her to the hospital and she almost died in my arms that night. Oh, and when we brought her in, the doctor said, had you waited another 45 minutes to an hour, we would be having a totally different conversation, but you're in the right place. This got bad. And I don't know the extent of how bad it is. And there's still a chance we might lose your daughter tonight. Hold that thought, Dave, and uh, thank you for that story. We will finish it when we get back from the break. Dave Schrader of Paranormal 60. We're also going to get to his brand new book, which you can get online. What's it called? Let me tell you. Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. 
We'll be right back. I just want to say quickly here, hello and welcome to tonight's show. If you're a fan of Dave Schrader's and there's a ton of you uh, in different chat rooms spread out all over the area right now. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, We do things just a little bit different here because we're a hybrid show of a live radio show, YouTube and podcast, which are live as well. The radio show, we have to take commercial breaks. So you guys get to hear what we're doing behind the scenes. So I appreciate uh, you guys uh, tuning us in and just want to give that if they're wondering what the, what the hell is going on? What was that music? What commercial? <laughs> what, the, what is this? What is this? So, yeah, that's a scary story, man. Yeah. So, well, and it gets, it gets scarier. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but show how things happen again for a reason. And it's, it, you know, you, you asked about my daughters and having experiences and, the paranormal, what we are going through in this story will uh, eventually play out on an episode of the Holzer files. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned. We'll tell the rest of the story right after this. <sighs> but in okay. the interim, uh, if I, if you don't mind me pimping just a little bit on the book that I've got, I do have one of my own personal stories in here. I've got a lot of great, weird, supernatural stories. I'm working on volumes two and three right now. I'm hoping to have the next one out around June and another one out later at the end of this year. Um, and I, man, I love writing. I love talking the paranormal. I love hearing people's thoughts and concepts and ideas on the paranormal. So and many of your listeners have followed me over from other uh, interviews I've done here. So thank you very much to your spaced out crew that, uh, that has now, you know, shown love to both of us and, and continue to do so. So I appreciate you, Dave. Oh, no problem. And, you know, I encourage, you know, one thing that I love to do with my audience is encourage them that if they're going to support other shows, support the ones that are working hard for you, the audience. And I encourage all of our listeners, uh, if you haven't hit subscribe and ring that bell on on Dave Schrader's channel, it's well worth it. And uh, he would really appreciate it. I would appreciate you guys doing that because Dave is one of the most genuine people in the paranormal world and in the broadcast world as well. And we hope, and we hope that we could earn the trust of your listeners who are in our chat room tonight, that they come over and hit subscribe as well. So uh, thank you, Dave, for allowing us that opportunity. I know you're broadcasting on your Facebook and YouTube channel as well. So uh, I hope everybody gets a good taste of two professional Daves broadcasting to the universe right now. The multiverse. We are obviously multiverse versions. You're the Canadian. I'm the American multiverse version. I am what you would look like without hair and without a full beard, Dave. Uh, well, you know, the. <laughs> I can't even argue that. Yep. I can't even argue that. We are lucky, lucky sons of guns. Yes, we are. Well, hey, Paranormal Pixie, good to see you and welcome, yes, to all my darklings. <laughs> Thanks, Jeez. Jeeves. Is that Jeeves Urquhart? Ur- Ur- I can't remember how to pronounce the last name. I do not know. I used to have a Jeeves uh, that I was friends with on Facebook, who I haven't heard from in a long time. If that's you, great to see you again. I like this one. Jerry Carter, bald Dave calls us dark legs. Dave Dave calls you got calls us you guys. <laughs> well, you know, I've been at it for 18 years, so. I'm I'm still willing to suck up to my listeners, you know. I ha- I haven't graduated that high yet, you know. Uh, actually, I uh, I think I had, had. When did you start in radio? Uh, January first, two thousand six, was the first episode I did of Paranormal Radio. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so my start in radio was July. No, no, it was October. 5th of 1998 well i started in doing stuff in 1988 okay uh, so you you gotta be smoked then august of 88 but i only did that for two years and then there was a big gap until 2006 yeah i uh, i got out of broadcasting school got my first job on vancouver island at a little radio station that's no longer there the coolest part about it was we overlooked uh uh the the Strait of Georgia between Vancouver Island and the mainland. And 
doing the morning news. My DJ, he was addicted to Joni Mitchell's Big Yellow Taxi. I can no longer hear that song anymore without screaming and wanting to pull my hair out. And I got beautiful hair, as you can see. Uh, but it was really cool one morning, though. We actually got to see uh, it was real low cloud over the over the ocean. Mm -hmm. And watching the, uh, we had a lightning storm going on as the sun was rising. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Hold on right there. We're going to get going here in five seconds. <laughs> And uh, thank you to W. Decker, T-Bone, Deb, and Louie for the Super Chats. Here we go. Here we go with the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. We're all paranormal tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Reminder to all of you that if you miss portions of this show or others, you can always check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news wire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Patreon in the Space Travelers Club. Here we go from the Paranormal 60. Dave Schrader is here. Brand new book that you're going to want to add to your library. It is called Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. And right before the break, Dave, you're telling us this very chilling story about your daughter. Right. My daughter would type one diabetic. We thought we had things under control. One day she went from just appearing to have a, a common cold and an upset stomach to I was carrying my daughter as she was dying in my arms to the hospital. Uh, got her in. The doctor said, we're not sure she's going to make it tonight. It's going to be tough. And the weirdest thing happened to me, Dave, is this sensation washed over me. And I thought, <clears throat> if she goes, I go tonight. And it was just like that. The fear of death was gone. And I just couldn't perceive or conceive of the idea of her going without having somebody to hold her hand. And I didn't know how it would happen. I was just pretty sure that if the minute she they said something horrific that she was gone, my heart would just stop. So it was a very weird, surreal moment to have that. Thankfully, it was a very touch-and-go night, but she made it through just fine. She is uh, a lovely, amazing 17-year-old girl. Uh, so I, I really was lucky in that. Um, but while I was filming the Holzer Files, uh, you know, you talk about synchronicities and the way things line up. <clears throat> we were called to the site of the Franklin Castle in Ohio. And this castle had these very strange stories associated with it. And there was the ghost of this little girl who was seen but only seen by the children that lived in the home. So we actually talked to one of the former residents, one of the girls that grew up, um, who used to play with this little girl. And she was basically like, good luck. You know, she only makes herself known to children. And we were all trying to, how are we going to make this happen? And this was still during COVID. So I wasn't going to bring anybody in or a daughter in. But I, I reached out to my daughter because that morning, as I was doing the interview with the historian, and she started to tell me about the little girl that passed, I said, oh, really, what, what happened? And expecting it to be bubonic plague or typhoid or tuberculosis, she said she died from complications of, of uh, diabetes. And I just tried to hold it together, and I just started bawling. My eyes were just pouring tears as this poor historian's telling me the story. And I held it together so she didn't stop. She didn't break. She kept talking. And then when I went, when she stopped and I went to ask the next question, I just couldn't pull the voice out. I just kept crumbling and had to excuse myself. Um, Shane came running to my aid, put his arm around me and just let me cry it out. And it was just so powerful a moment. And to realize that this little girl is trapped in this house, just wanting to find her parents. And how are we going to help her? And I contacted my daughter, told her the story, and I said, would you make a video or two? Just ask four or five questions. And my daughter took it upon herself, created the questions, was brave enough to allow me to air it and put it on the show. 
And I do believe that it was that interaction that brought this girl forward. We got an EVP, and later on in that episode, a fully formed apparition appeared behind us as we were doing our best to help clear the spirits out. So, you know, they say things happen for a reason. And in this case, I feel like if getting close to death, feeling that, having that sense as a father and a daughter of possibly losing somebody helped us connect to somebody on the other side. And that was an extremely powerful moment for me, for my daughter, and for that TV program. I was a blubbering mess throughout the entire episode. I They had literally had to keep stopping as I would just have to go off and cry. It was brutal. I want to ask you, before we get into your book here, mm-hmm. and, and that's a very emotional story, and thank you so much for joining us or telling us that story. But here's a question that I've been asking a lot of paranormal people lately, because mm-hmm. I'm now not sure what it is. I believe that there are spirits like this that happen, that there is no coincidence that there are people, whether they're stuck here or not, from the other side. But in your opinion, what is a ghost? I've been pounding this drum now for about a year. I, I cannot and won't pigeonhole because I don't believe a ghost is any one thing. I think that there are time slip phenomena that's taking place just moments in time that bump up against one another and allow us to see through the veil um you know the ghost hunters tv show we're doing an investigation uh, at, at a very famous hotel in new york and while they were in this woman's room princess they were talking and communicating princess are you here can you hear us and they were getting an evp back going yes i can hear you this is my room where are you What's going on? I'm, I'm going to call security. So you wonder in that moment, who was haunting t- who? Was Princess living in her time era, hearing these voices in her room? Or was, was her spirit just that lost and confused that it, she didn't realize she was dead? I'm not sure, but that's kind of time slip phenomena. I think some of it is that echo, that stone tape theory of just a residual moment playing out. Um, I believe there is conscious memory of some of these spirits, but I don't know how fully formed they are. We call them fractals. You know, this, this place means so much to me because my, I watch my children grow up here and, and have their first loves and their, their first losses and their first everything and first drives. And I, I think there'll always be a piece of me in this house because this is, was an important place in my life. So I think that we leave little slivers of ourselves around. And then, you know, there are a lot of the different religious principles that believe that when we die, the best of who we are moves on and the garbage stays behind. So the, the anger, the frustration, the jealousy, the rage, that is the, the goop. And maybe why, in some instances, it's very basic, rudimentary, animalistic kind of communication, pounding, lights flickering, get out very territorial sense is it's not a fully realized version of us, but that little piece of animal that was left behind. So I think that there's so many different aspects playing out at all times that it's impossible to define what a ghost is. And I don't think we should truly ever define it because I I think that's part of the magic is every time I start to think I understand what's going on, a new door opens up to me and a new possibility. And that is exciting. I think that's what keeps pushing me 18 years into this and 56 years into life, still wanting to continue to to research this, and I never get bored with it. What do you think is out there? What are we missing? I, I think a big problem is that we don't give ourselves enough credit as humans to just how powerful we truly are how linked we truly are. The ability that Dave Scott and Dave Schrader can talk to each other from a world away in the blink of an eye is remarkable through the internet and the the web and, and all of that's available. But I think that there's elements of who we are that have been lost, that we may have been able to telepathically communicate 500, 700, 800 years ago, that there's those elements of our humanity that we've lost in progress because we become so focused on other elements instead of the being and instead of community that we've lost touch with those elements of who we are. 
but they still exist. It's like you're sitting there and your your phone hasn't rung, nothing's going on. All of a sudden, you pick up your phone and you're thinking of Dave Scott, and all of a sudden, bing, I get a text message from Dave Scott. Right? I think that that's something that we miss is that there is magic around us all the time. That there are these incredible features of what we're capable of that are there all the time, but we just just oh, that's a cool coincidence. That's well, that was weird. And then you forget about it. But really, I think if we focused and gave that more attention and worked on that muscle, I think that there's so much more that we're capable of doing. Yeah, I, I could just imagine if we what it would be like if we actually tapped into the human mind, even another two, three percent, how mm -hmm. much more powerful as living beings that we would be. And one of the things that you are is you're a very creative human being. You've been on numerous successful television shows, including the Holzer Files. And you have been one of the greatest talk show hosts regarding this subject in its history. And I have no problem saying that. I bow to you for your incredible talent. Thank you. You've got this new book out. It's mm -hmm. the first book that you have published on your own. Mm -hmm. And we got to get into this. The theater, of the theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the supernatural. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was a little shocked that you went down the other story realms, whether it's UFOs and aliens or monsters, because I just take you as a ghost guy. I take you as as Mr. Paranormal. Mm -hmm. And yet here you are really showing your your delivery into every other subject. Well, that's the concept is I love that there is so much going on and so many different tales to tell. And I believe that there is a common thread between all of them. And if we start paying more attention and we pull those threads together properly, we're going to weave together a full tapestry that will eventually show how these creatures and demons and angels and aliens and, and uh, cryptids all pull together into something that is less supernatural and more natural to what we our world should be, that we won't be as broken. So in the book, I didn't want it to just be a book of ghost stories. And when I thought of the concept of doing this book, I was, um, I had uh, for years on, on uh, my podcast, Darkness Radio, had created a segment called Theater of the Mind, where I would take people's stories and put them into a script form with their permission. And, and I took their story. It's exactly the way it happened. The only thing I would do was add, you know, uh, moments and elements for sound effects. Like as I walked down the long gravel road, I could hear the sound of the wind through the, you know, through the trees and the owl, the lone owl hooting above me so that Tim would have some direction of <laughs> to add to the story as we did this. And, um, and I sat there thinking, well, I've got all these amazing stories I've heard that people may have only heard once on my radio show and will never get access to again. And I just took them back from a script format and put them into a narrative format to share these stories and get the chance to put them back out there so that people could hear them and share them and and have them at the ready. So I I wanted originally wanted to call it uh, stories to scare the beep out of you the bathroom paranormal bathroom reader because i each story is about a good sit down if you uh, if i'm being honest with you it gives you the chance to really kind of find a different story and there's everything from haunted possessed dolls to time slip phenomena to aliens to ufo's and more so uh and changelings um ghosts i have one of my stories that was featured on the tv show uh haunted hospitals but i give you the real story behind the garbage that they put out and give you the chance to to find out the real story behind it. And uh, I, I just, I love the fact that I can make these stories available to people again, because I think this is an interesting element of who we are and that we're willing to share these pieces of our story that might be naturally overlooked is just a, a cool way to kind of give back to the community. All right. Well, you have obviously your, your favorites that you have mm -hmm. come together with, you know, and I'm going to hit you up before you do this book mm -hmm. outside of ghosts. What is your favorite topic? I think some of the time slip phenomena, just the strangeness of, of that. Uh, and I'll tell this one. I, I don't know if I've told it in the past. It's, it's the one I start off the book with. I come out swinging is a really cool 
fully fleshed out story of time slip phenomena, unlike any I'd ever heard before. But the first kind of cases that I started hearing, this guy said, uh, listen to me, paranormal boy, explain this to me. My grandparents bought a cornfield, wasn't ancient Indian burial grounds, wasn't a war zone. And we never once had a ghost happen there. They built a home. They lived there for 30 plus years. And then one day grandma's watching Jeopardy at three in the afternoon and three shadowy figures walk in front of her, stop, look at her and run out of the room. How is that possible? Nobody's ever died there. Nobody's ever died near there. We have no clue what this was. And we talk a little bit about it. Then he goes, now let me tell you the other side of the story. Two years later, my grandmother passed away and I stopped by to visit my grandfather with two of my friends. And we walked into the living room and there sitting in the chair was my grandmother. And the three of us stopped and looked at her and looked at each other and ran out of the room. And then I thought, this is exactly what my grandmother saw. So who was haunting who in that moment? So there are so many different elements of time slip phenomena that exist and people that have driven down a road and they stop at a gas station that looks kind of like a throwback old gas station and they go in and they interact and the people there are really clean and pressed outfits and things. And it's very strange. And they leave and the next day on their way back, they want to swing back in and thank the owner for being so kind last night and helping them find where they're going. And there's nothing but a parking lot there. And there used to be a garage there and a gas station in the 1950s, but that's been gone since the fifties. So those moments of time slip, when, when our reality and, and a parallel or past reality come together, those are so fascinating to me. Yeah. I, I love them too. Have you ever had time slip on your own? I, uh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, how much time do we have before the break, Dave Scott? We got seven minutes. All right. So I'm going to be honest with you. It does involve in the story. Uh, so, but here's where it gets weird, right? Uh, it was when the movie 28 days, uh, what was it? 28 days later, I think was the name of the movie with the zombie movie came out. My buddy from Illinois came up to visit me and, and, uh, we were going to go into the theater and he goes, hold on. And he takes a couple of hits. And he goes, you want some? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? So I take a hit and then I take another big hit and he goes, slow down. You don't smoke much, man. The, when's the last time you smoked? I'm like, oh, it's been about 10 years, but I smoked weed in high school. I'm going to be fine. By the time we got up to the door, I was barely able to function. I was just, whoa, what is happening to me? And we went in, we sat in the theater and we were talking and we had that seat in between us that was empty and we're, we're kind of chatting. And meanwhile, um, I'm listening to the conversation of the man and the woman in the row behind me and hand to God, Dave, as I'm having this conversation, all of a sudden shink, I would shift just a little and the curtains changed colors. The shirt my friend was wearing changed colors and the couple was still behind me, but now they were crying. She was crying about the fact that they had lost their dog and well, honey, it's going to come back. Don't worry. I don't know. It's been gone so long and blah, blah. And all of a sudden shink and I'm back. And I remember my friend Leo looking at me and he's got this look on his face. He's like, are you all right, man? And I go, I don't know. Shink. And I just kept slipping between these two almost identical movie theaters, hearing these things. And then finally, when I pop back in to this reality, I turn around and I look at them and I said, did you ever find your dog? And the couple just looks at us and they're like, what, what? And I said, your dog, your dog went missing, right? Did you ever find your dog? And my buddy's just eyes are like saucers and he's staring at me and, and they go, how did you know about that? And they said, we were here a week ago, sitting in these exact same seats, watching a movie, talking about our dog that went missing. They weren't doing it while I was sitting there right now. They were doing it a week ago. And I was hearing them tell that story. So I have no understanding of what was happening to me, but I kept shifting. It was like two different realities taking place simultaneously. And my conscious memories and mind were not being contained to one world. And I can say I was high. So take it for what it's worth. But I think it's really astounding that I, in this reality, turned and talked to them and astounded them because I knew what they talked about a week before sitting in those exact same seats. Wow. 
That is incredible. Like you picked up the the residual energy of that yeah. conversation. Or that was is- it taking place today in an in an alternate universe? So, could- you know, it, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But the weird thing is, Dave, it's a super clear memory for me. It's as clear as our last conversation together. So to be high and have that kind of memory, it definitely implanted on me because I remember it exactly how it happened and it was so strange just a very very weird weird experience we got four minutes to go before we go to break and i know this will probably carry over to uh the other side of the show and i want to ask you because when i was going through your book there is one story in there being canadian i didn't know this one okay and so i'm going to blame canada on this one the impossible phone call you open up with this mm-hmm. in your book. I got to know what this is about. Well, that's the time slip story, the first one. And I just, I don't want to give too much away because that is one of my favorite ones, Dave. But it is um, uh, this family in November of 1963 received a phone call uh, regarding the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And it came from a very unlikely source and everything proved out to be true. The only problem was that they got the call on November 21st, 1963. So it's another one of those elements of time slip phenomena or consciousness existing beyond the realm of the physical. And it, it, it's it, to me, it's a really great, powerful story. Uh, and I'm glad that I was able to get that one. I'm sorry I can't go into it in more in depth on some of the stories like that one. That's why I picked it to come out swinging because it's a it, it's a really cool, powerful story. When you first, I'm going to ask you some indirect questions about it. Then, sure. When you first hear a story like that, mm-hmm. we always, at least for me, I look at it. I'm like, wow, I can't believe that happened. And then I mm-hmm. start to dissect it. How did it happen? Why did it happen? You know, when you look at it, and you've heard thousands of stories over the years, why do you believe this one? My job is not to believe any one of these stories over any other story. Just some resonate better with me. Just like the guests that you have on your show. Your job is not to make your followers and listeners believe the stories they're hearing, but you're giving that person a platform to share the story. Uh, You're giving that person the opportunity to... um, open up about it. And what I found over the years, some of the most bizarre and outrageous stories, people reach out to me afterwards and they're like, thank you for having that guest on because I thought I was crazy. As a matter of fact, I've almost killed myself a few times thinking I was so insane for believing this. And now I know I'm not alone. And I get hundreds of letters regarding that topic that I would have been more than willing to summarily dismiss and roll my eyes at. So I've learned to just accept everybody's story at face value. And it doesn't mean I have to believe it, but I find it intriguing. And the concept of what this story is and how it develops is so intriguing to me on many levels, because again, the person that called them reached out in a different conscious way. Right. And uh, you know what I mean by that in the story of where she was how would she have gotten access to that phone? And how would she have known a day beforehand? So it's really kind of a fascinating aspect to that too. And because I'd heard other stories that kind of fit these veins of time slip, if it was a one-off, it'd be real easy to say, that's just too fantastic to believe. But due to the fact that I've heard multiple stories of, of similar scenarios that have unfolded, to me, it's, it's a cool representation and it's one that'll be memorable. I love it, man. I, I love it. And, and, you know, we have a little bit of a saying here, uh, a little bit different, but along the same lines is we believe everybody. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we've been doing this long enough to know when somebody's pulling our leg and someone's not, but you know what? The one thing I always want our audience members to remember is I've never stood in your shoes. You've never stood in mine. And who am I to sit there and say that your experience is not what you say it is. I wasn't there. I never saw it happen. And I've had my own experiences that people have laughed and criticized me about. And I refuse to do that to anybody else because I wasn't there. So 
I think truth is a good way to go. Dave Schrader, Paranormal 60 is his podcast and YouTube channel, and his brand new book that you're going to want to add to your collection. It is called Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. We continue next on Spaced Out Radio. All right, Dave, we got uh, five and a half minutes. We're going to turn things over here to our good uh, artist here, Dirty Filth, and hopefully Blob will make an appearance. And uh, there we go. What do you got for us tonight, Filth? I uh, drew Man in Black. I would have never known. Would have never known. And I have absolutely no idea where Blob is right now. Mm. Well, you got a bunch of uh, new audience members who are tuning you in tonight. Why don't you tell them all about you, dude? I'll be right back. Dave will be right back. Hi, I'm Filth. I draw cartoons on Space Out Radio. I like long walks in the graveyard. Cheese pizza. Normal things. Hold on, let me go find the... Oh, there they are. Um, hmm. Show us some fantastic artwork. Okay, well, here's another drawing. This is what I drew yesterday. Aliens talking about sports. Let me grab the stack here. Oh, yes. Uh, if you go to filthy.com, F Y L T H Y.com, you can scoop a copy of my book or calendar or both. Oh, geez. Let's see here. You know? I should have wrote this stuff down. Uh, yeah, filthy.com has all the links to all my Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. I should actually make a little macro for it. There's a cartoon of a gray alien coming back asking for his craft and fallen brethren and the man in black's telling him that we kind of chopped them up and back engineered the craft unbelievable Hello, Tim Lathman. Love you, love everybody. Bob Bergens, Jeeves, Kira, Deb, Bill, Joe, Pearl, Pixie, Tim's beard. Let's see here what else we got. Oh, we got the old jellyfish UFO classic. Maybe that in a little bit. Cats still haven't decided to come upstairs, so I don't think there'll be a blob sighting. I apologize, everybody. Oh, yeah, I have, a, I have a stack of Valentine's Day drawings here. You've unlocked my heart. Yuck, yuck, yuck. The poor jellyfish. Nobody believes in the jellyfish, apparently. Beautiful. California Beautiful. night crawlers. You are beautiful, filth. Thanks, Dave. Just, just beautiful. You're a handsome guy, too. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to bring Dave Schrader back here. 
Hi, Dave. Hi, guys. Hopefully that rebooting my system will keep me from crashing on you halfway through this one. Well, let's hope. If not, well, we'll just will, wait for you. Uh, Yes, I'll come back in as soon as I can get back in. It's just been a weird system lately. I'm sorry, my man. Sorry you're going through that. Yes, Dirty, give your uh, website again, if you don't mind. It's filthy.com, F-Y-L-T-H-Y.com. It's got all my links to social media junk on there, too. Thanks for watching, everybody. Very Thank cool you. art. Very cool. Thank you, He's sir. Have a good night, gentlemen. See you, buddy. Thank you for your time. That's dirty filth, everyone. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. You know what we got to do next year, Dave? Hmm. I know you do a lot of travel. We got to combine the SOR fan party and invite the Paranormal 60 party to join us in I'd Reno or Vegas or wherever. Sounds good. Yeah, man. We're going into our third annual one this year. We're in Reno this year, May 10th through 12th. You're invited if you and Winnie want to come. Everyone's okay. invited. Yeah, everyone pays their own way, and we just show up and have a good time with the fans. We go live on the air. We uh, do a bunch of ghost stuff and UFO stuff and all that kind of stuff. The main thing is we get to hang out with the fans. That is cool. Yeah, man. So maybe next year. We should talk about that. I'm all for it. Yeah. We're actually putting together a P60 event. Uh, so this is even news for my darklings. We're putting together a P60 event to hopefully do a little bit later on this summer in a Midwestern town, and we'll be giving more information about that soon. Well, let, let us know. Let mm -hmm. us know. Thank you, Laura, T-Bone Times 2, Louie, Debbie, and W. Decker for the amazing Super Chats. Greatly appreciate it, and here we go. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. And on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. Here we go with our number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on Odyssey Radio, Talk Stream Live, at KPNL. All of our archives are free. Join us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do old Davy the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Chair. Chair is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the newswire, check out the swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Patreon in the Space Travelers Club. We continue on with the great host of Paranormal 60. Dave Schrader is here, and we are talking about this great book that he has just put pen to paper called Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and other strange stories of the supernatural. Dave, thank you so much for being here, my man. My pleasure, buddy. I'm always glad when we can catch up. All right. You sent me a little text message earlier today. Mm -hmm. Haunted dolls. Yes. I don't know about you, man. These things creep me out. Mm -hmm. This is also in your book. What's yeah. going on here? Yeah, I uh this one is is one of my favorite stories, and I love the art that they create uh the that we got created for it. It's not gonna show up now. But uh, the artwork created for it, and uh, I had to make this a colorized book just so that you could see the red eyes on the character that we have here. But do you have that picture you can put up of the actual doll of Emily? I'm going to try. I'm going to try here. Yeah. And let's see what we so can do. It, 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 and, and when it comes to dolls, I get a lot of freaky dolls that are sent my way. People will drop them off at conventions or, you know, they... they uh, send them to my post office box or like, I don't want this in my home anymore. Please get rid of it. And, uh, yeah, that's Emily. And look at her eyes, Dave, the, for those of you listening, it's this really cute, pretty little, uh, you know, little house in the prairie ish looking girl with the ponytails and the, the kind of gingham looking dress. And, but her eyes are, red they've glossed over in red and uh she has a very weird history that we cover in the book 
Um, and I share the letter in total that I was sent. Uh, you know, the guy basically just dropped off this paper bag with a doll and a letter attached. And uh, I tell you about what happened with the doll for him and what happened to the doll with me afterwards. But yeah, I, you know, people always, why do dolls freak people out? There's nothing scary. And I know when I posted a picture of this doll earlier today on social media, oh, that doll's not scary. Well, it's easy for you to say the doll's not in your house. The doll's not messing with your life like some of these, these dolls have done. And they could look real cute, but man, th th some of them can turn people's lives upside down. And uh, I'll be sprinkling some of these doll stories in throughout the books as they come out. But like I said, I want each book to kind of have a nice little, you don't know what's next, what's next around the corner. You can kind of start feeling like, oh man, I'm glad I got past that scary doll story. What's next? And you don't know, maybe it's a demonic clown. Maybe it's a Loch Ness monster. Maybe it's an alien. Maybe it's a demon or a Ouija board story. And it's what I like is just having that there's going to always be a steady flow of these strange tales to share and give you kind of a concept of the world around us and real life experiences people have had to deal with. I mean, you look at this doll, you look at Annabelle, you look at Robert the doll up here just north of me is Mandy the Haunted Doll in the museum there. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think this is with these spirits that are attaching themselves to dolls? Well, remember when I talked about fractal spirits last hour? Yeah. Okay, so think about a doll. When you think about dolls, and especially older antique dolls, some of these dolls were the best friend of these children. It might have been the only toy that they'd gotten that year for their birthday or Christmas. So they would really take care of these dolls. They would be there. And if there were tragedy in their family, uh, this becomes the focal point for that boy or girl that owned this figure. And a lot of emotion is poured into them and children talk to these dolls. So I think that sometimes this fractal of what we were, that, that trauma or extreme love could be connected to that doll for a while to inhabit it and keep it, you know, kind of keep that there. And sometimes you upset the apple cart. These fractal spirits become enraged by the way you're treating it. And uh, it's being passed down and people start disrespecting these things because we don't have the same reverence for the toy and we didn't grow up with it. We didn't have these great experiences. So it's not, you know, it doesn't have that same vibe. And I think that that then the spirit that is imbued into that doll becomes petulant and angry. Do you think then that these spirits can attack people like we see on the Chucky movies with in child's play? I mean, I mean, I don't know what it is about dolls, but I, my buddy Merle, you know Merle, you've met yeah. Merle before. He loves collecting haunted dolls, loves collecting anything and of antiquity, and he was almost killed by Mandy the haunted doll wow. back in 2015, and Mandy put him in a trance, and by the time Merle was grabbed by one of his teammates. He was about 10 feet from the busy highway where he was going to be walking onto the highway. Yeah. Wow. It's, I mean, these dolls, I mean, you're not supposed to look them dead in the eye. You're not supposed to, you know, like with Robert, the doll, you're not supposed to take his picture without asking. I think Annabelle is like that as well. I mean, how do we figure out these rules of what to do with a doll or not? I guess, you know, some people pull in the psychic impressions with Annabelle. I think, uh, uh, here you've got Ed and Lorraine Warren. Lorraine was a sensitive and she might've just picked up on, you know, these are the things we can and can't do with Robert, the doll. There's been legend and lore that have been passed down. And I got to tell you, I encountered Robert face to face at TapsCon oh. in like 2007 or 2008. I was at the conference and my vendor table was directly across from Robert. And at one point, and I'm just looking at this stupid looking doll and I'm just like, give me a break. And people are up there, oh, Robert, can you can I take your picture? Oh, Robert, oh, Robert. And I just walked up and started taking pictures. And I didn't, oh, Robert, and I didn't thank him, and I didn't leave a dollar token. I didn't do any of it. I, I have no faith in that. I think things only have power when you give it, you know, that kind of faith. And I walked away and uh, got home, 
after that weekend. And I went to my phone to show my family some of the pictures I'd taken. And the only pictures that remained on my phone were the pictures of Robert. Every other picture in time and perpetuity had been wiped out. Every picture I'd ever taken was missing off my phone. And that wasn't the time of the cloud. So it wasn't automatically saving for me. Every picture but Robert the doll were wiped got, off my phones. You got to be kidding me. Nope. So I, uh, I, I've never fully apologized to Robert, but I also figured, you know, if that's what he wanted to do, that's, he got his point across. So I, you know, but I erased all the pictures of Robert off my phone and it, I never had problems with that again. Now, in the case of like Robert, the doll, mm -hmm. do you think it's haunted or do you think the legend has created a tulpa that has really blown into extreme? Again, who knows for certain? I mean, it's, it's interesting to kind of consider both sides of that story, but you know, there's, I always liken it to the, the, uh, Wes Craven's new nightmare. I love that Wes wanted to reinvigorate Freddy Krueger, but realized that Krueger had become kind of a parody of what, of this nightmare creature he had created. So he, he writes this movie as though this demon, this real life demon attached itself to the concept of, of Freddy Krueger. And when they stopped making Freddy Krueger movies and he was no longer getting the attention, this, this demon became upset and spoiler alert. If you have not seen that movie, um, that demon starts harassing all the actors from the original nightmare on Elm street movie and Wes Craven. So in the movie, they're playing themselves being tortured and haunted by the you know, this demonic creature that's taken on the visage of Freddy Krueger. So I think that in some cases, these beings might adhere themselves, things that are already there. Well, if you're going to give reverence to this stupid doll, if you're going to fear this doll, then I'll be a reason you should fear this doll. I believe that that might happen and something connects to it. But as I said earlier in the last hour as well, I think we're a lot more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. And there very well could be a chance that we imbue and, and bestow upon these things a living essence because of our fear and our stories that we give to it. You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned Nightmare on Elm Street because I don't really think I've even told my audiences. I, when I was a kid, I wasn't really into the paranormal or anything mm -hmm. like that. You know, I, I said, I, you know, I remember saying, hey, I want to see three things before I die. I want to see a UFO, a ghost, and... I want to see a, a, a Sasquatch and, you know, that was manifestation because I definitely have seen all of them. But when I think it was a nightmare on Elm street, part three came out and their theme song to that was by Dawkins called the Th dream warriors. Remember that? Right. Right. Yeah. That song. And then the following movie, remember when Will Smith was still a rapper and he, and he did uh, uh, a nightmare on my street. Right. Between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m., no word of a lie, I woke up to my radio playing because back then I fell asleep. I, I wanted to be cool, so I fell asleep with the radio on. Sure. You know, and, and for about two, three weeks straight, every night between 1 and 3 a.m., I woke up to one of those two songs playing on my radio. And and then it, it kind of phased out to where it wasn't the docking one anymore. It was the nightmare on my street one where mm -hmm. at the end Freddy Krueger's voice comes out and it yeah. scared me so bad. I didn't put the radio on at night for about three, four months because I was absolutely petrified that that would actually happen. <laughs> I'm your DJ now, Dave Scott. Oh, scared the daylights out of me, man. Like I'm yeah. like 16, 17 years old and I'm like, Oh no, this ain't getting me, man. This ain't getting me. But getting back to dolls for a second here. Sure. Do you have any dolls in your own collection? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my family's not too happy about it either. I've got a lot of dolls, but, and I've, I've gotten rid of a lot of dolls. I've had people that have wanted dolls and, uh, you know, so I, I brought a lot to charity events and we've auctioned off some of the dolls. I never get rid of the ones that are vicious. Um, if there's any stories of these dolls hurting people or or they believe to have hurt somebody, I don't bring those dolls. Those dolls are in a 
in a tub in my garage wrapped in holy bubble wrap. Uh, you know, I don't know if the Pope himself breathed the air into those bubble wraps, but I've, I've got it on good authority. They're safe and tucked away. Um, however, the doll you see on the screen, Emily, she was one of those dolls that I wrapped up, put in a box and put out there in my garage. And my daughter uh, came to me one day and she's like, dad, I want to show some of my friends the haunted dolls. Where's that Emily doll? And I said, she's out in that one far back box back in the corner. And then my daughter came back and she's just had this terrified look on her face. She goes, dad, come here. And I'm like, what? We walk out there and the box is there. And Emily's sitting on top of the outside of the box, not wrapped in bubble wrap. Uh, and I'm like, I go, Pacey, are you screwing with me? And she's like, no, dad, I, I won't even go near it. I thought you said it was in the box. And when I come out here, were you screwing with me? I'm like, no, I'm not screwing with you. I put, so I, I took the doll off and I opened the box and there are a few of the other dolls in there that had been broken. So I, I don't know, man, it's, it's weird. I, so I wrapped her back up, put her in there. And then I did mention that story online on, on air one night and she never did any damage per se. She's just a freaky doll that doesn't like other dolls and, uh, seems threatening. And I had a gentleman buy it and he kept in touch with me for about two years after he bought it. And he, like, I think he said there were times his TV would glitch when it was sitting next to the TV or the TV would turn on or off by itself what do you think the fascination is with people collecting haunted items namely namely dolls and you know figurines of clowns that scares the hell out of me well part of it is right dave we we can like something and it can be a little scary so we're kind of on that razor's edge but the fact is it's a doll and truth come you know to pass i'm gonna stomp the living crap out of a porcelain clown doll if it tries to kill me uh i don't believe that they're imbued with that kind of power and strength i don't think and maybe i'll find out the hard way one day i hope not but uh uh yeah i, I think people like them because they do seem a little creepy and dangerous and and there's always that part of you that says yeah that's not real it's not real and i've sent i've got people a couple of guys out and uh, gosh i want to say it was like norway or denmark um bought one of the dolls the baby from me and they've kept her and have reported on her on her on their show and have shared stories so yeah, people i think they just like the concept of having it and some people will take them in and treat them like a um a displaced animal that was at a kill shelter and they bring these dolls in to give attention and affection to these dolls again and things seem to go away and they don't have the problems everybody else had with them but when you compare where they came from to where they ended up that could be the reason is that they're getting the attention and they're getting the love and and appreciation again that they weren't getting locked in someone's attic in an old musty dusty box that is very true even though i'd still prefer them in a musty dusty box you know i'm just <laughs> I'm just waiting for my daughter's Barbie to collection to start working its way around the house. You know, yeah. I mean, ugh. we have a Batman. My, my grandson keeps a bunch of his toys here and we've got this big Batman robot in our living room. And mm -hmm. from time to time, it will just turn on and start. Beep, boop, boop, choo, choo, choo. And jokingly, I've said, if there's somebody here trying to get my attention, you got my attention now stop. And it stops. And my daughters and I have looked at each other and we've gone. That was just, timing and coincidence right yeah yeah sure and then we go back to watching tv i i think it probably has something to do more with the tv and vibration on the floor maybe triggering something on there but who knows i asked it to stop and it stopped so at oh. least it's polite and it listens better than my own children so i'm okay with it yeah yeah that, that that's a winner right there let's get to a couple <laughs> audience questions here for you sure. you know you know what's funny is dark starry sky listens to you but then she found us and she lives right in my small community here. Wow. Right in my small community. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So she's asking, Dave, what are your thoughts on those creepy black eyed children? I, I love those stories, Dave. Those have been, I, I almost feel like a parent to them. Uh, Darkness Radio was really one of the first shows to start blowing that story up and start sharing stories of black eyed kids. And uh, I, I'm really fascinated by them because of the, they, they 
they lean into urban legend territory for me. And by urban legend, and I don't know if you had this in Canada, but this was this was big. There was this story going around um, when I was growing up of the lady goes out to her car at the mall and she gets in and, and realizes there's an old woman in the car in the seat next to her. And she says, what are you doing in my car? I'm lost. I can't find my car. I don't know how to get home. Can you drive me home? Please just, I'll give you the address. Can you drive me home? She's like, no, I don't, you know, no, please, please. I don't want to be alone. All right. Um, fine. I, I have to go back in and pick my shoes up at the counter. That's what I was waiting on. I will come back and then I'll take you. Oh, thank you. And she leaves and goes into the store and gets mall security. Mall security comes out. They start talking to this old woman. And finally, one of the mall cops reaches in and grabs her and pulls her out. And a wig falls off and there's a hatchet on the seat. And it was a petite man who planned on murdering this woman. And that was the story going around when I was a teenager. Everybody knew somebody who knew the person that that happened to, but nobody was ever that person. So that was kind of the urban legend that went around or the urban legend that if you flash your high beams at a car that has no headlights on in the dark, that's a trigger for some gangland initiation. They're going to turn back around and kill you. And so when I started hearing these black eyed kid stories, I started thinking there was some urban legend element to it, but I was fascinated because I think they're good, creepy stories and I like a good scare. But then I started hearing from people around the world and these stories went much further back than just the 1990s when Brian Bethel first shared his encounter. Uh, I started hearing from people that had encounters in the 40s and 50s. I heard from military personnel um, over in Afghanistan and Iraq that had seen these black-eyed children show up just before tragedy struck. So I do think that there's something to them, but I don't know what they are yet. Do you know Jacob Rice, paranormal investigator out of Washington State? I'm horrible with names, Dave. I apologize. I, I might. You have to get him on your show. He okay. has one of the most incredible black-eyed kid stories you could ever, ever hear. And it happened uh, just after New Year's a couple of years ago where his dogs were even reacting to it in the middle of the day. Security cameras all over the place didn't capture the kid. Hmm. Nothing. The kid wasn't even on camera. You could see Jacob on camera talking to somebody at his fence, and there's nothing there on the other side. It's creepy yeah. as hell. Creepy as hell. But uh, let's get to another audience question. we got two minutes, Dave, sure. uh, before we got to go to break. Castle Dude in the UK is asking, Dave, what do you believe really happened at the Lizzie Borden house? That's a great question. I... Uh... I'm going to mention a character that sounds silly and um, impossible to believe. Uh, but I think that if Lizzie did it, I don't believe she was fully responsible. I think she may have been um, swayed or possessed, if you will, to to do the murder and uh, from the Puck Wudgies. And if, you, if you're not familiar with Puck Wudgies, it's a cute sounding name, but I guess they're very vengeful little uh, uh almost kind of fey like characters that the native americans know about and and other you know uh, people have spoken about but the puck wudgies in that region of the area uh, could be responsible for that i i believe lizzie had a hand in the murder but i don't necessarily believe she was of right mind when it took place and she may not believe that she did it why does that case to this day still captivate and fascinate people of this genre? I think because, again, it's like a good zombie movie. You never know where the enemy really could be next. It could be your child, your parent, your 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 grandparent, or the neighbor that you love. And with Lizzie Borden, there's still that question, and there are so many interesting suspects to consider that it's not just a cut-and-dry case, and it, it again, activates the imagination and allows us to consider multiple alternative realities. Well, you know what? I think the alternate reality thing is a lot more believable than what we know. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I think the Thunderbirds are flying, not the Air Force Thunderbirds, the big Thunderbirds. You know why, Dave? Why? It's because if you had a 40-foot bird flying around, you imagine the size poop that would take? 
<laughs> that would paint a car, man. It would paint a house. It would paint a bridge. Yeah. Trees, and we don't find that. We don't find it at all. New universes out there. My friend, I'm going to get you to hold on. We have Dave Schrader, radio host, television star, now author of a great book that you can find on Amazon. Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. Dave Schrader, we have him until the top of the hour, right here on Spaced Out Radio. Stay tuned. Deb, your question's coming up next. And hi, Paisley Parker. And... Who else? Spider Queen. Can't wait to read your book, Dave. Awesome. Thank you. And you can go get it on my website if you live in the United States at paranormal60.com. You can buy the book and you can get it signed. We're just waiting for the next book. I blew through 250 copies in about a week and a half. Uh, so I had to buy another box of them and I'm waiting for those to be delivered to sign. But you can go to paranormal60.com, order the book. You can get it signed or unsigned from me. And in Canada, just buy it off of Amazon unsigned. And uh, hopefully I'll be out there in your neck of the woods and we can do a signing at some point. Oh, well, Bill Bigsby's calling me out. This isn't his first book either. Well, Bill, that is somewhat correct. But this is my first solo book. The first book that I was a co-creator on is The Other Side, a, a teen's guide to ghost hunting and the paranormal. But I share the title uh, of creator on that with Marley Gibson and Patrick Burns. This is truly the first book I've put out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We win. We win. Yep. Uh, hold on. Winnie's a message. Me. Jacob's last name. Yes, Jacob Rice. Uh, do I have his email? One second here. Can't get a signed copy to Canada. Uh, I do see your question. I could. Yes. If you would like to order a signed copy to go to Canada, we checked. Shipping's about $35. The book signed is $30. So I just think you're off. You're better off not getting a signed copy when you have to pay $35 shipping and handling. I don't understand why there is such an insane shipping cost to Canada from the United States for a book. And then from my understanding, Dave, and maybe you understand this even more, if I put any value on the book and say that it's a $20 book, they're going to tax you when you get it and you have to pay more of for it when you get it over there too. We're used to it. We're used to it. Just buy the damn book. Insane in the membrane. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Bill Bigsby, for buying the book. I appreciate that. Thank you to all who bought the book. Sorry, I'm just messaging uh, uh, Jacob Rice for you right now. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Mark G, my buddy, one of my moderators on my show in my chat room is over here pimping my book and putting up links. So thank you very much for doing that, Mark. He is. He is. That guy's a trooper, man. He is. Super trooper. I'm surprised he has any fi fingertips left after the amount of typing he's been doing. Unless he's using the old cut and paste. And if he is, I don't care. Thank you for doing it. Mm -hmm. and sharing. spider queen spider queen where are you in canada spider queen spider queen does whatever a spider queen does mm -hmm. count pupper welcome <laughs> scary times for now nancy hey steve purcell thank you I just saw your order come through on PayPal. I appreciate you. And if I could mention for your all of your listeners watching along live right now, I'm also doing live events. You can see all of those at darknessevents.com. And if you want to ghost hunt 
with me and Dalen Spratt in Minnesota in April. We only have about six tickets that remain for that event. It is our uh, shifting the paranormal event. Dalen Spratt from the Ghost Brothers and myself doing a paranormal event at the Palmer House Hotel in Sauk Center, Minnesota. Darknessevents.com. Awesome. Spider Queen, where in BC are you? I'm in the Caribou region. Whereabouts are you? Spider Queen, probably, I bet you she's Lower Mainlander, Vancouver Island. Almost guaranteed. Maybe a tad bit in Kelowna. Oh, well, let's see here. We wait for the response. While we wait, thank you, Deb times two. T-Bone with a hat trick. CS, Louie times two. Lara and W. Decker for the great super chats tonight. Very much appreciate the love and support. Oh, Powell River. Merle and Jacob Rice have actually investigated the museum there. Yeah, they've got a documentary on Paranormal Road Trippers YouTube channel. Paranormal Road Trippers. All Thank right. you, Count Pupper. Thank you. All right, Dave, we got six seconds. Reminder, you can shop at our Spaced Out Radio store. We do not have ugly swag, people. Here we go. Here we go with the second half of Spaced Out Radio tonight. Thank you for tuning us in. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate hurting your listening ears. Reminder to all of you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news wire. Check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Patreon in the Space Travelers Club. Final half hour, Dave Schrader from Paranormal 60, one of the top paranormal shows that you can find on podcast as well as YouTube. Yes, he's also famous from his television days, and now he's got a great book out that I highly suggest you add it to your collection. Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, time slip phenomena, UFOs, aliens, monsters, and other strange stories of the supernatural. Dave, thank you so much for being here, my man. My pleasure, and thank you to your listeners. I'm watching as they're placing orders right now for the book. And I know it's the listeners because I can see their names in the chat room, and I see them on the uh, the order That's form. So thank you very much for the support and love. Perfect. Perfect. I don't take you for a UFO guy. You, you no. got a couple of UFO and alien stories in here. Yeah. Feel, I, had, know. I, I had a UFO encounter. I had multiple UFO encounters. Um, Trout Lake, Washington, and he said he ranch. Uh, I had uh, UFO encounters there on my own. And then I talked about it so much and was so excited about the place that the kids from Paranormal State, if you remember that show back in the day, yes. uh, Ryan Buell called me up one day. He's like, Uncle Dave. How about if we do a field trip? We go away from ghosts and demons for a week and you take us UFO hunting. If you're serious about this Trout Lake, Washington place, I'm like, oh, I'm dead serious, son. And we did went out there. So if you can find um, Paranormal, St or, yeah, Paranormal State, I think it's on Max streaming right now or Discovery Plus, Paranormal State. Uh, I'm in season two and the episode's called First Contact. And it's a young, fresh-faced Dave with a brown goatee. So uh, you'll be able to see me on that and hear the stories and my experience and what we caught on film. And it was a great opportunity to go out there and, and get to do that. But uh, that place is is off the charts nuts with activity. I've wanted to go there. You know, it's too bad James Gilliland is, is, doesn't say much during his interviews because the stories that he has are, are pretty incredible from yeah. there, Kira, who's in our chat room, she used to spend a lot of time down there. And, uh, you know, it's amazing where you could find these hot spots that just seem to have a little bit of everything. Whether, it, you know, all of these, like the East City Ranch, Skinwalker Ranch, Bradshaw Ranch, we've, we've heard a lot about them. Mm -hmm. You know, and it just amazes me that these spots are all over the place. And yet the majority of them we don't even know about. 
And more, you know, Marley Woods, that story is coming out more and Thomas Ferrario talking about it. I mean, I think that there are these hot spots, these nexus points that people are starting to take more notice of. And you might be surprised. One of the coolest moments, Dave, I was at Eastern State Penitentiary hosting an event in probably like 2009, 2010. And we were doing an event there and it was hot. It was a hot summer night. So it really holds the heat inside the prison. And I went outside to get some fresh air and there were a bunch of people smoking and trying to get some fresh air. And I was just sitting with my head, looking up to the sky when all of a sudden this craft comes flying across the sky, silent black craft, just flying. And we were all like, what is that? And it, not a sound and it was moving. And then all of a sudden you hear this, from across the sky comes one of the black phantom jets and it's chasing this thing. And it comes, I mean, this thing looks like it's booking at three times the speed of this alien craft. And all of a sudden this craft just goes pop, and it was gone. Like it just took off. And all of us were just standing there going, did we just see a UFO over Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? This is bonkers. And we all witnessed about 10 of us standing out there. We all witnessed this thing take place. That is amazing. Yeah. I love when that happens. Yeah. What, in, your, in your terms of everything you've learned, mm -hmm. what makes a good UFO story? Again, it just kind of depends on the person. When I've talked to um, people like uh, Travis Walton from the Fire in the Sky story, and have you had a chance to talk to Travis? You know, I've met him. I met right. him in on, at, uh, at the Alien Cosmic Expo in Toronto back in 2019 and he's like yeah I, I want to do your show i want to do your show i'm like great let's do it man and he's never responded to my emails since you know but yeah he, he's aloof that way yeah he gets he gets aloof from time to time but I've, I've had him on the show a few times and hearing him over the show is almost not as impactful as seeing him in person tell his story uh and watching him because he you can tell that when he really gets into the story he is only a shell in front of you an avatar telling the story his brain and mind is aboard that craft and josh gates and i were in um utah at a conference and you know we both love and and respect travis and travis was up at the front and he was telling his story and he he was somewhere along the lines of it. he's like and then as I stood there looking at this ball of light and he just froze like that, like you thought did my video screen just freeze, but he just stood there and Gates and I looked at each other and he goes, Schrader, is this a medical emergency? And I, I go, I don't know. And we both stood up and we started slowly walking down the aisle and he just stood there and he was gone. And we got about three quarters of the way up the aisle and all of a sudden he goes, the light was glowing all over. It was as though for him, a breath took place, mm -hmm. but there was a moment of lost time for him there that literally extended probably 45 to 50 seconds of just silence frozen. And it wasn't him trying to recall. It wasn't one of those nervous, like, uh, uh, uh you know, when you're trying to recall something, he literally, yeah, I saw the ball of light and and he was gone. And that was one of the more chilling moments for me and didn't make me think the guy's mental, but made me think that's, that to me is more proof that something has taken place. I've, I've had people tell me interesting encounters and stories, and I, I kind of like to watch their eyes. Not that I'm one of these believers in the whole, you know, if they're up to the left and to the right, they're accessing this part of their brain. I don't want to evaluate them that, that much. But when my grandfather would tell me about World War II, you know, we could be talking, oh, yeah, Dave, I was out fishing the other day. I caught this big crappie and blah, 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 blah. And then you start talking to him about World War II, and he would be there, but he wasn't there. You could see that he was on the field watching his friends being blown up around him as he's explaining the story. And that's what I find interesting when you talk to experiencers is when they're really sharing that element you can see the pain etched in their eyes and on their face 
of this experience and the remembering of this experience. Talking to Chris Lutz, the youngest boy from the Amityville horror story. I believe him because he does the same thing. He, and sometimes he'll like get up off the chair and almost stand behind the chair and hold it while he's telling you, like he's trying to buffer himself from the reality of the things that he did experience. So those are our elements of stories that really watching the way somebody tells the story relates back to that story and is affected and impacted by that story. That it's not just a tale to tell at the bar of that night. I got lucky. It is something that is deeply ingrained in every fiber of who they are. Man, that's beautiful. That's poetic right there. Yeah. That's poetry in motion right there. You know, and uh, by the way, uh, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Jacob Rice and, and Winnie are now talking about oh. finding a date uh, for you to take him on and tell us <laughs> why I get story. You know, so yeah, we got that set up for you, my man. Excellent. I, I, Thank you. I hope you enjoy that. Do you think we're being visited by aliens? Yes. I, I think aliens have probably been here all along, Dave. I think that uh, they probably have underwater bases. Uh, and it's like that. Was it Isaac Asimov? Or I'm trying to remember. There's there's a great story, uh, a sci-fi story, where the aliens, uh, we're all panicked about the aliens, but it's being told from the aliens' perspective. And we're the aliens. They're these black amorphous things that are slipping around on the ground that the humans keep seeing. They're the real inhabitants of Earth, and we are the intruders. So I think that there's something to be said about that. Uh, they just predate most of the cultures. They're just kind of accepted in Native American legend and lore and folklore and in indigenous tribes, people around the world. Uh, so I think these things have always been a part of us. And maybe they just don't like the way they watch us evolve, and they're just pulling further away. Do you think that we are being visited from another planet, another dimension, another time warp? I mean, there's a great debate on what they're calling non-human intelligence now as we, you know, once you get the government involved, everything uh, gets a little bit more complicated, like the names. But just your thoughts on that. Well, the government being involved explains non-human intelligence right there, doesn't it? Um, True. I. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I don't think that there's any one correct answer. I, I've talked to people that I know and love and trust who have seen being step out of interdimensional portals. I have uh, witnessed craft flying in the sky above my head that looked like a living being. And when I went to James Gilliland and told him what I saw, he explained that it was a half biological, half machine, and it it that's how it gets between dimensions. Sounds absurd. It sounds strange, but I have no other explanation for the things that I've seen. So I think part of it might be time travel. I think it's fascinating how many UFOs are seen right before, during, or after major events. And really, history is nothing more than the winner's story. So I, I would guess that at some point, we would have to want to know our history so much. Why wouldn't we travel back in time? to go witness the day that Dave Scott and Dave Schrader defeated the army Nazi zombie horde to see what really happened and mark it down in the, in the books for the future. Right. So I could see there being an element of time travel involved as well. Well, you know what? I mean, that is the great debate of what is going on right now is more people are coming out about their encounters, about, what they've experienced or, or seen with their own very eyes, or mm -hmm. maybe they've been on other craft. I mean, when you look back at all the stories that you have now written about, heard, is there one that stands out for you that, you know, that maybe may not be as familiar as Travis Walton, but is something that we got to pay attention to? Um, Boy, you know, I just I just talked to uh, a gentleman on my radio show, and he's a, a scientist, a neuroscientist, a doctor, um, and uh, I want to say it right, Dr. Bruce Rapuano, and he is, I think, the first mainstream scientist to come out and talk about his experiences with aliens and his alien abductions and the fact that he had, at about the age of six or seven, he had uh, an implant put into his nasal cavity. Um, so it's, it's, he's got a great story and this is a guy that 
is an, a neuroscientist, neuro doctor. He knows how the brain works. He understands if you would be having hallucinatory issues. And he believes that he had real experiences and has spoken to people like that. And we, I just literally interviewed him two days ago uh, or last night on my show. So that's, that's a guy I think is worth listening to and, and hearing um, sitting down with Jesse Marcel Jr. Before his passing and getting a chance to kind of break bread with the guy and talk to him and hear his story was really powerful being the son of the gentleman from Roswell, but remembering these things and seeing how it played out. So those again are going into some more of the famous stories, but I include in the book, some of the ones that, that really impressed me that, that really seemed to have kind of an interesting element to them that I, I I hadn't heard before. Um, And again, those are some of the reasons that they stand out to me too, is it's not always just the run of the mill story. There's, multiple layers to the way it's told and experienced. Do you believe that people are being abducted? Yeah. Or is it, or is it imagination? I, but I don't know what the abduction truly is. I, I talked a little bit about this with uh, Dr. Rapiano last night on the show, because there are people that have woken up seeing themselves hovering and floating through solid forms. And I've begun to question if your brain is trying to process and make sense of what's taking place. If you look at yourself, you're going to see what you expect to see. So is it really, are they really taking the human form or are they taking the cloud? Are they taking the intelligence, the consciousness and working with that? And we're only seeing a physical form because that's what we need to see to not break our brains in that process. Uh, but then with that said, there are people with physical markings, scoop marks, these uh, um, implants that they're finding in the brain, in the bone, in places where they shouldn't be. Uh, Jesus Payen Jr. had, uh, what, about six to 12 of them in his leg that they could not explain and could not figure out where these shards came from. So I think that's an interesting and and telling element of it as well. So, yeah, I think, why why wouldn't they? We do that. We find something. We tear it apart and explore it. And we inject it with things and we remove things from it. And so I would firmly believe uh, that it, there are other races out there that want to know about us and what what can they learn from us? And are they injecting us with diseases to see how it impacts so they can cure their people? You know, I don't know. I think there's an element to all of that that's very true. Yeah, I, I know as an experiencer myself that nobody may believe me what I've gone through. Mm-hmm. But I sure as hell know is what I've experienced. Right. For sure. I mean, when you wake up on the table after your head's been cut open and you feel the little fingers run through your hair, I know you wouldn't feel that, but. Wow, uh, Dave Scott. Wow. I went there. You went there. You know, but I did. I'm sorry. There's the Canadian <laughs> in me. I'm sorry. You know, but I can tell you this, man. Uh, the experiences that I remember of, of being taken a few times. You only get little snippets. They only give you a little snippet, like mm-hmm. five, ten seconds to remember. And just so they don't, yeah, that was uh, what happened last night. But I will tell you a fun story. Just a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. I felt I, I got taken. And in that, my dad was there. And in that dream, I had, for some reason, I had it. Instead of my iPhone, I had one of those indestructible 1995 Nokia phones. Okay. So it rings. And the ring is do 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 do. And I dropped the phone. And after I dropped the phone, I could feel that gravitational pull that I feel when that incident is happening. Now I went to bed after the show about one o'clock, woke up at two oh nine. Okay. And I could feel them behind me in my bed. And I turn my head and look, and I see from my window, which is looks out to my patio, I could see the bright white light shining down, and then bang, light went off, they were gone. So I literally, Dave, I crawled out of bed, 
And the minute my feet touched the ground, I was frozen, frozen, like shivering. So like I was having a, a pneumonia attack or something, right? I was so cold. And so I, note, do not spend the night at Dave Scott's no, house. No. <laughs> no. So I jump in the shower, you know, my teeth are chattering and I'm trying to warm up and finally warm up, crawl back into bed, wake up the next morning, call my dad up because he was there. I said, hey, dad, how did you sleep last night? He goes, well, I got up a couple of times in the middle of the night. I said, well, what time do you wake up? Well, I woke up at 7.15 this morning. I said, no, the first time last night, what time did you wake up? He goes, it was just after 2. I said, what, about 2.09, 2.10 in there? He goes, as a matter of fact, yes, which is the exact same time I woke up. Wow. And I said, why did you wake up? He goes, I was cold. And I had to go get another blanket to throw on top of me because I was cold. Wow. Well, I was getting the shivers at that exact same time. And I said, well, what woke you up at that time? He goes, I don't know. I remember hearing something drop on the floor and goes ba and went bang, but I can't find anything on our floor. So remember, I dropped the cell phone. Right. I said, I said, well, what time did you get up this morning? He goes, well, I got up at 7.15. I said, how did you feel? Because I felt like something happened to my chest. I've been having some heart issues recently with high mm. blood pressure and everything. And my dad <laughs> says to me, he goes, you know what, son? This is the best morning I've woken up to in a long time. He goes, I wasn't wheezing. I wasn't coughing. He goes, I feel great today. So he had his chest cleared as well. Wow. That's amazing, man. Yeah. That was that two really weeks cool. ago. That mm -hmm. was two weeks ago. Freaked me out, man. Freaks well, me out. There's a story in here uh, in here that I think then you'll find fascinating. Let me look at the title of it real quickly. Um, do, 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 do. Deep Breath is the name of the story. And if you haven't read it yet, Dave Scott, read it. I think it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to you and deb i didn't forget about you i have seen trilogy of terror with karen black and that little zulu doll that was one of my nightmares growing up so yes i did see that and uh yeah that was that movie stuck with me i think maybe a lot of people that's why they're so fascinated with dolls right it's those elements of these little things that should be basic and innocuous that are yeah. terrifying one more question from our audience we got two minutes to go here dave from Helen, I moved into an old house, my back, arm bad. I saw human bite marks on it. What could have done that? I don't know. I don't know. You know, wouldn't it be interesting to be able to follow the history of that location and realize that at some point this child lived in that room and kept seeing this person and the child lashed out and bit the person because it was frightened and trying to get this thing to leave. I don't know what could be causing it, but if you know the prayer of Michael the Archangel and you're religious, I would utilize that prayer, uh, put up a couple of Benedictine medals, and um, that would be the way I would start with that. Yeah, tequila also works well, too. <laughs> but to kill the pain or the bite marks? Kill the pain, always. Yeah. It's a good way to do it. Dave, with 90 seconds to go, I want to say, a big thank you. I know you come on this show two, three times a year, and it's always so much fun when we get the opportunity to have you here. I really wish we could do it more often, my man, because I always have such a great time uh, having you here, and you're such a, a wonderful presence on radio. You really are a benefit to everything that we do, man. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, brother, and I always love visiting you. You're one of my favorite shows to get down and and chat with because I feel like, uh, you know, we're brothers. We have uh, this kindred spirit amongst us that we can share these things right. and know that the night is going to, is going to be a little bit better and a little brighter from the information that we share here. So thank you for allowing me onto your realm and thank you to all of my listeners for joining in tonight and for all of your listeners for following over on the paranormal 60. It's been a great uh, simpatico relationship that I hope continues for many more years. Remind everybody where they can find your book and Paranormal 60. 30 seconds. Paranormal60.com is my website. That's also where you can find autographed copies of the book. You can purchase them there, or you can buy unautographed copies on Amazon worldwide. 
So thank you again. Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness is the name of the book. I'm Dave Schrader. That's Dave Scott. And this has been One Remarkable Night. It has been a great night. And now, you know, if, you, if you're a Schraderite hanging out here, you can hang out more. we got another hour to go on Spaced Out Radio. Because up next, we have from the YouTube channel, Among the Missing, Steve Stockton comes in with another weird report, followed up by Travis Willier Moustus and the Cryptid Report. Hour three of Spaced Out Radio is next. And once again, we remind all of you to go out, get Dave Schrader's new book. We'll choose it one more time. Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness, Ghosts, Time Slip Phenomena, UFOs, Aliens, Monsters, and Other Strange Stories of the Supernatural. I got it in there. <clears throat> well played, sir. Well played. Yeah, I timed that out well. My friend, thank you very much. Always, Always a pleasure. Have yeah, a good one. And make sure uh, you and Winnie get uh, Jacob uh, scheduled for your show. You got, you'll got, you love him. You will yeah. absolutely love him. I look forward to it. Thanks for the tip and hint on that. And everybody, if you have stories, weird stories you want to share, and we'll read them on our show, you can email me, Dave, at paranormal60.com. And until we meet again, Dave Scott, I will see you soon, my friend. See you, buddy. Take care. Right. Good night. Dave Schrader, everybody. Literally one of the best literally one of the best and we we absolutely love them around here i'm going to take a quick break i will be right back you guys sit tight we got hour three of the show coming up right after this
How awesome was Dave Schrader? Let's be honest. He was amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right. Reminder to all of you that you can get your tickets for the third annual SOR Fan Party in Reno, Nevada, May 10th through 12th at the Silver Legacy Casino and Resort by reserving them at info at spacedoutradio.com, info at spacedoutradio.com, and we want to see you all there. Got the live show, the VIP party, ghost tour of Virginia City, and a UFO watch with Melinda Leslie. Merle's going to run the paranormal tour. We got a bunch of people coming. Merle, Melinda, Jim Goodall, Science Bob, Lala Bright, Lorian Fenton, Geraldina Roscoe, Carter Bouchard, Les Velez, and we'll see who else is going to show up because you never know who's going to be there. So come join us in Reno. Info at spacedoutradio.com. Info at spacedoutradio.com. May 10th through 12th in Reno, Nevada, at the Silver Legacy Casino and Resort. Thank you to W. Decker, T-Bone times three, Deb times two, Louie times two, Laura and CS for the amazing Super Chats. Hi, Magnus Vermagnuson. How you doing? And who else jumped in here? Killing Reality, nice to see you. Here we go. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Here we go with our three of Spaced Out Radio tonight. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you for tuning us on in wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. I want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the news, wire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Patreon in the Space Travelers Club. I also want to remind you that it's all this time of night where we say hello to Steve Stockton from Among the Missing and another creepy story. Hello, friends. Welcome to Among the Missing YouTube channel on Spaced Out Radio. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'm about to take you on an unbelievable journey of people just like you. Their stories and encounters will haunt us. On Among the Missing. In 2013, on a Sunday in late July, Robert Hoagland vanished from his home in Newtown, Connecticut. He left without a cell phone, wallet, passport, or usual loafers. Robert was a married man, 50 years of age, with three sons in their 20s. He worked as a real estate appraiser and was affectionately called Hoagie by his friends. The police reported that he was last seen on July 28th at a Newtown gas station on Church Hill Road. He had visited a local bagel shop before stopping at the gas station. There, he filled his car with gas and bought a map of the eastern United States. Robert's credit card transactions were investigated, and it was determined that the gas station purchase was the final transaction he made on his cards. He was seen smiling on the station's security camera footage. Three hours later, a neighbor reportedly saw him mowing his lawn. During their investigation, the police reviewed Robert's personal computer and found a program installed that erased all his internet searches. Upon examining his work computer, they discovered that Robert had searched for an address in Rhode Island multiple times, which unfortunately led to a dead end. After Robert went missing, his loved ones stepped in to aid the police in locating him. They handed out flyers at the Labor Day parade and gave interviews to increase awareness. Lori Hoagland, Robert's wife, admitted that their son, Max, was struggling with addiction, which presented challenges for the family. However, she insisted that the situation was not dire enough for Robert to disappear. She and her husband united in their efforts to help their son. Reports of potential sightings of Robert were shared nationwide. One unverified sighting came from someone who claimed to have seen him in Rhode Island. Another sighting was reported by someone who saw him leaving a business in Brookfield in a car with New York plates. Police received a tip one year after his disappearance, placing Robert in Putnam County. 
in 2013, Robert started working as a property appraiser under the alias Richard Rich King for a small firm in the town of Wallkill, New York, which is situated outside Middletown. Towards the end of the year, he found a place to live on Craigslist and moved into a rental home in Rock Hill, New York. He shared the house with a man named David, a local high school music teacher and musician. According to the Albany Times Union, David had moved out of his home after a divorce. Upon moving in, his new neighbor, who went by the name Rich, claimed to have just separated from his wife and was new to the area. David asked for identification, but Rich did not have any. Rich explained that he had left everything behind, including his ID, as he was divorced and his children were grown. He wanted to start a new life. When he moved in, Rich brought limited belongings, including clothing, accessories, and a small bed. To transport these items, he used a vehicle provided by his employer. As David's lease agreement prohibited him from subletting to anyone, Rich was not required to undergo a background check and was not added to the lease. The landlord remained unaware of Rich's presence until after both parties had vacated the premises. Rich paid his portion of the rent and utilities in cash, and later on, David included him in his cell phone plan. Even though David purchased his own house in 2020, he and the man he knew as Rich continued living together. They regularly exchanged Christmas gifts and had a weekly routine of having dinner together on Sundays, which Rich typically prepared by watching sports, especially football. Rich shared a few details about his previous life in Connecticut, including that one of his children was struggling with drug addiction. Aside from his job, Rich volunteered in a soup kitchen in Monticello, where he frequently cooked on Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. The head cook recalled him as someone comfortable in the kitchen. On December 4, David returned home after a weekend performing with his band in New York City. He saw the car Rich drove still in the driveway that evening. He reviewed security camera footage that showed Rich had been holding his back as he entered the house on December 3rd. David grew concerned after Rich didn't leave his room to make Sunday dinner or to go to work the following day. At David's request, a friend stopped by the house during the day to check, but no one answered the door. Texts he sent to his roommate were not answered. Finally, after work, he entered Rich's room and found him unresponsive and not breathing. David attempted CPR, but to no avail. Police who responded to David's 911 calls had difficulty ascertaining the dead man's identity since he had nothing with Richard King on it. They did find letters addressed to Robert Hoagland. Sullivan County officials worked in conjunction with Newtown Police to confirm that identity. After being known as Rich for years, Robert Hoagland was deceased at just 59 years old. In an interview, David said, quote, I just want people to know there was nothing strange about his life, other than the fact that he was able to disappear for nine years, end quote. Thank you to Steve Stockton from Among the Missing for another creepy story. If you like stories just like that, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell at Among the Missing. Also, speaking of subscribe and ringing that bell, we are encroaching a major milestone on our own YouTube channel. We are at 24,930 subscribers. You know, by the end of February or early March, it would be nice to hit 25,000. That's a major mark, 25,000 subscribers. So if you haven't yet, do us the favor, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for us as well. All right. From the mysterious to the monsters, Monster Hunter Travis William Mustus coming on Spaced Out Radio right now. <laughs> love it and, and our radio audience can't see this but if you're on youtube you can all right every time we bring travis william boostus on this show he is so pumped up and excited he's just fist pumping he's clapping he's got a big smile on his face he's ready to get some monster business done how you doing my friend oh oh doing excellent dave uh, it's excellent to be back on and uh yeah, I'm just having a wonderful night here, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me back on. Hello to the fans out there, and it's great to hear that uh, that uh, the, the fan base is growing and the subscriber list is just increasing, and that's wonderful and just excellent news. 
it's always good. It's always fun, man. And I thank you for always coming on. Okay, we always got to start. Where's the kitty, man? Where's the little kitten, you know, that you got? Because he's a troublemaker. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he's he was sleeping in the back room, but I'm sure he'll be around and out here in any time soon. So, <laughs> perfect, perfect. I want to ask you, you know, as someone who is a monster hunter and somebody who is uh, is out there looking at, for all these creatures and trying to figure out what it's all about, where they're coming from, how do you deal with them, both on the uh, earthly ground and in the astral plane, when it comes to black eyed children. This is something that, you know, it kind of creeps me out. I don't want one of these encounters. I've experienced a lot, my friend, but I really don't want one of these encounters. Have you ever encountered black-eyed kids? Uh, to be honest with you, no, but I've um, I've heard a lot about it in the spiritual uh, world, and a lot of people, like, uh, gave me uh, kind of, like, uh, fair warnings about them and just told me that, yeah, these... Uh, these uh, beings are going to be amongst us and, and it will be, they'll be very different, very interesting, like, uh, like a uh, very distant, uh, like almost like they're like uh, always observing and like uh, uh, calculating kind of deal. But it's like, um, like I said, yeah, they're going to be amongst us in, in time. And uh, yeah, that's what I was told a lot, a lot about. And that will be like, a, it's like almost like uh, when the, the world and everybody is like evolving in this, uh, in this, uh, in this way. So it'll be like, uh, We'll see more species of uh, different humanoid types, and and that's just uh, part of the whole uh, galactic community and uh, and this universal uh, cosmic unity, I should say. <laughs> what do you think they are? Uh, like I said, it, it was like uh, like I said, just uh, other forms of human humanoid beings, uh, especially with uh, the the altered eyes. Like I've come across many different kind of humanoid beings, especially with uh, different kind of eyes. Like some of them even had like frog looking eyes and those guys weren't too uh uh i should say they weren't on our side I should, you know in that level but um uh yeah so getting getting back to the point though is like uh, i wasn't told anything uh to uh like uh like uh like i said to be warned too much about the the black eyed children it's just like i i was told that they might have like a lot more um uh i should say like they have a lot of the intuitive there, but it's almost like um, like a distant from the emotional side kind of deal. And it's like, uh, yeah, and that's why they kind of find us interesting because we're just so uh, emotionally uh, driven and, and a lot of our ways, like in, in all of our, like in our art and all of our like different kind of like our, our just way we live and how we, how we go about ourselves, right? So it's like, uh, we're very, very intuitive beings in that sense. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I was told anyway about it. Is there certain times when these creatures come out, if we could call them creatures? I'm not even sure really what to call them. Entities, creatures, uh, they seem to be really freaky. You know, and they say, you know, if they ask you if they can come inside your door, or open up your car door or your house door, that bad things will happen. You know, is that just an illusion or is that something that we need to worry about? Now, that sounds uh, a little bit different from what I was uh, told about. I was told about like uh, this, like uh, also evolving, like um, like within within our species as well, like as a human beings. Like but like what they're talking about is like a like almost like a dark spirit trying to get in the house. And uh, and yeah, these uh, some a lot of these dark spirits will have like you know, blacked out eyes and, uh, our, our features in the face that seem to be darkened or blacked out. And, uh, yeah, these, those are like, uh, like, uh, I should say dark force beings, uh, dark, dark energy, dark frequency beings that are trying to get in. And yeah, that would be like a bad, bad case scenario. You wouldn't want to deal with that unless you're, you know, uh, you know, meant to deal with that in that sense, like, or you have the capabilities of dealing with it. Okay, so if we switch from them to men in black, because this is another question that we get a lot on this show, is what exactly are men in black? Are they human? Are they not human? Are they aliens who are uh, in human disguise? Have you ever had to deal with men in black through all of your experiences? Just on the human side. But uh, from what, I, what I've gotten from the spiritual realm and other 
other uh, spiritual, like uh, I should say, people that were uh, looking into this subject were, uh, yeah, it's made up of a lot of different species and beings. Like it's not only humans, there's a bunch of uh, different kind of, um, I should say, other humanoid beings with the help of, uh, 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 I should say, uh, subjugated kind of AI, like where they kind of work alongside them and uh, figuring out a lot of the stuff and galactic beings and, and uh, but yeah, it's like I said, it's a, uh, it's kind of a collective of uh, different alien beings and, and our human human race. And it's kind of all kind of kept in private and in that way, in that sense. And same thing with the black eyed children or amongst them as well. What brings, what brings in, in the men in black? Oh. What brings in the men in black? You know, is it the UFO sightings? Is it the alien contact? And if so, how do they know? Yeah, um, you know, usually, uh, from what I was told, it was like, um, it's usually like the encounters and then uh, people are being very straightforward with it. And, uh, but also too, a lot of it is like when technology is like uh, recovered or in a sense, like uh, when, when like, uh, see, when these things happen on reserves, like say there's a crash landing in a reserve in Canada and the whole reservation gets shut down. And it's like those guys come around and they start asking questions and, and uh, when they when the military is doing their exercises, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, and they they come to t pick up a crashed UFO or whatever in the lake, and then you know a lot of people get asked questions and things, you know. And but yeah, that's kind of like when that happens, and those guys come around. Um, I, I, I gotta ask you in regards to something you just said when the military comes around for crash sites have you seen this happen no but like like uh no not not near here but it was uh it was like happening you know a couple of reservations down the way and we were hearing a lot about it out here and uh and then also uh you know near BC and stuff like that. We hear a lot about the stories from out there. And my uncle was a, like I said, a well-renowned healer. So when he travel out to these areas, they tell him about these experiences and things that have happened. And then uh, also out here, like I'm just saying, like a lot of times, like uh, things will happen, like, like barricades will go up and different things. And, you know, people will be like, kind of like uh, wondering what's going on and when, sh when things shouldn't be that way. And, but uh, yeah, there's, um, a lot of that in areas like our blocked off areas in the woods where you can't go like, you know, be like private area and like uh, only, uh, you know, uh, authorized personnel beyond this point kind of deal. And like there, there'll be like blocked off zones and places that you can't go like, uh, but yeah, uh, interesting things like that. Okay. I, I have to follow up with this because this is very interesting. What is that story that your uncle told you about crash retrieval? And I didn't think that the Canadian military had access to reserve land in Canada. Uh, we are federal. We are federal uh, as like uh, and as uh, native people here in Canada. We are not uh, provincial. Like we are actual federal. Uh, we are all federal status, I should say. So uh, we are more along the lines of uh, Canadian military in that sense. So. Um, we have our own laws and our own jurisdictions and things on reservation lands. And that goes for all the territories that are signed under the treaties. And, um, so like a lot of times that military, uh, and native, uh, kind of go hand in hand in that sense. And, uh, yeah. So like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, different things that are worked out over time and, and, uh, things that take place. But, uh, like for, for when it was like that UFO crash retrieval, it was like the reservation was totally blocked off from leaving. Nobody was able to leave their homes for seven hours and military trucks were in and out, but they were saying it was a, it was like a quarantine and they were practicing, uh, I should say their exercises and they're doing all these kind of things and had all the people like, you know, ready to evacuate and things like that at that time. But like, you know, and it was just like, kind of, but they were told to stay home. So it made it all weird. And, and this kind of came back through to uh, my uncle and his, uh, what he was telling me about, like how people were, they, they shut down the whole reserve and search everyone as if they were leaving and stuff and making, you know, take doing check stops and everything. And yeah, like it was like a pretty, pretty traumatizing thing. Like, uh, 
strip churches and things like that. And yeah. What year was that? Was that recent? No, this was like during the nineties. Like, uh, like, uh, he was telling me this in our, sorry, or late two thousands, but early, early 2000, like 2008, 2009, he was telling me all this stuff, but that was cause I was getting like more into like the military and things. And he was telling me about stuff about stories about these guys, right. About military and how their involvement with the reservations were and different things. And, but, uh, yeah, no, that was like, um, yeah, it was like a, you know, at the time I was just, it was just one of those things I was hearing from him. And he told me a lot of different mm-hmm. things over the time, mm-hmm. like, uh, including like, uh, you know, like about just UFO encounters and d- different, uh, like I should say, star people, uh, uh, I should say, uh, uh, ceremonial like connections and, and the universal outlook of cosmology and our native outlook, right? But uh, so he was the one who was like always like very interested and fascinated with all the different tribal connections. And and uh, so when he was always telling me, it was always something like very interesting along those lines. So, uh, but yeah, like that, that that was uh going on uh you know that happens every now and then and and still to this day like you hear about people um you know like i said uh coming across these uh uh crafts so you hear stories about it like a native guy coming across a craft and ends up like uh, keeping care of it and helping out the alien guy who was crashing the craft and you know and things like that and and ends up uh, helping them out until the craft takes off with you know, or he gets help with uh, from another craft to come pick him up. You know, it's stories like that, or or the native guy gets uh, picked up and he's gone for you know, and he doesn't come back for months, and he comes back all of a sudden. I know the reserve near my home here. Uh, yeah, they, they have a major issue with their people being taken. What is it about First Nations people that seems to attract alien abduction? All right. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's our, it's our natural, like, uh, connection with our, our outlook of the universe. And, uh, especially when, uh, say, say we walk our path, our natural, like our connection with the spirituality, uh, all these, uh, all these pathways and avenues and, uh, connections open up to the universe and on many different levels through elements, through the plants, through the animals. And then, uh, ultimately with the ultra terrestrial beings, like the universe, the stars and, and then eventually, uh, when our soul reconnects to uh, its soul being and leaves this existence, and then uh, that's when it go- makes that journey. And and uh, depending on how we lived our life, uh, we'll, we'll be, uh, you know, uh, we'll either connect back with the universe, or or if we did a lot of bad, we'll get lost in the in the I should say in the mist for it could be thousands of years, seven hundred years, you know, or more until uh, until you know, well, great spirit comes and speaks with you personally and said, you know, speak and sees if you're ready to make that, uh, that, uh, I should say, make that, that the second chance, I should say, kind of deal. And that's all that, that all depends on the creation at that point. And that's the only time you ever talk with creation that, you know, like, even like, uh, when we pray, we always pray, uh, we're always praying to, uh, like our, our spirit connections and guides, the animals and, and the plants. It's always through, through them. And, it's never right directly to creator or creation. It's always like, uh, cause we can, like as human beings, we are, we are always like, uh, we are always very humble. So we, we always think like, uh, we hold a great spirit in such high regard that we, uh, that we speak through our, our elements and our, and our beings and our guides and, <laughs> and all those, uh, I should say those, uh, connections that we make throughout our spiritual journey. Uh, you know, uh, I was talking a lot about, uh, a lot about the animal humanoids and a lot of the beings out there, a lot of dimensionals. And, uh, a lot of times when the beings come to us, either through vision or they're being there in physical form, they will take uh, half human, half, uh, animal bodies or plant bodies. And they will, uh, they will come to a, come to a person like that with messages, depending on like their connection. If they're if they're doing they're walking a good life and they're walking that good path and they will come across good beings like um, and that will have good messages for them. But uh, if they're uh, walking a dangerous dark path, they're going to encounter malicious kind of entities and there's really no controlling those entities or. or, uh, or like, uh, All right, Travis William Ustos, he will be back taking some questions from our live audience here on Space Out Radio. The Cryptid Report with Travis continues right after this. We'll have right to the top of the hour. 
Spaced Out Radio. Final half hour is next. Stay tuned. All right. We are clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was that's excellent. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more about that because there's like uh, some levels to that I gotta I gotta brush up on there with the uh, especially when you're entering into those high frequency fields and it's like kind of like you're in the in the open universal zone where it's just kind of like uh, you know where you're beyond uh, your your safe or your guardian area kind of deal and you're there with your your spirits and you're walking in there with their energy and I can go a little bit into more about that if you would like. Yeah. Let's do that. that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I, like I said, uh, I was told a lot about these uh, different kind of dimensionals and beings to look out for out there. Um, so, like I said, most I've, I've encountered have been uh, on a good on a good plane. Uh, but the ones that I've encountered on a darker plane, like I've been called to or been asked to help with. Um, other than that, like on a, on a spiritual basis, like when I've come across these beings out in the wild, it's been for a, a message kind of like a, a foretelling or like um kind of like there's a connection there in the universe with it in that sense and, and if i have to defend myself or blast at you know these like you know if there's like a bunch of yellow eyes that are coming my way like you know then you know and defend myself or whatever right then that's that's the case but most of the times like i said it's been uh like the, i said the beings have been pretty uh like a on a good on a good level basis with me and um especially with the ets in that in that sense but like if i've been actively called to an area to clear things out then yeah i've, I've had to deal with a lot of like different kind of uh, dimensionals or different kind of spirit entities and or um our weird kind of like uh like a coyote dog uh, uh beings that have been out there <laughs> weird question from little cam over on twitch what kind of shampoo do you use for your nice hair? Take that sip of that Timmy's. <laughs> yes, um, that's that's hilarious question. Just 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 head and shoulders, I guess. There you go. <laughs> oh. I'll give you a few of those for that. Oh yeah, there you go, little gam. <clears throat> Way to hit home with the. The hard question of the night. Really pushing that journalism on me. Uh, all right. When UFOs fly over Travis's house, the aliens lock their doors. Oh, Joe, 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 Joe. Oh. They love the flyover. Actually, I had a couple fly over the other night, but they were so far in the atmosphere like so high up that i couldn't really catch them with my camera they were they were passing through clouds in the sky and then like i said uh like it was just too too high up for me to catch any glimpse of it but i see you can see them with the, with your eye right so oh yeah oh yeah i love me a good ufo love me a good ufo that's the way it goes let's see here All right, we got about two minutes. Okay, give me a second. I'll be right back. No worries. Are we having fun? What are we seeing, Vanessa? What are we seeing? Yes, we see you. Um, hello there, Paramarv. All right. We just got under a minute here. Vix, nothing bad. It's Vix.
dark starry sky head into the 105 on the 1300 gravel road perfect area where the trees burned down a few years ago perfect area for the northern lights and starlink All right, thank you to our super chatters, Deb times two, T Bone with a hat trick, CS Louie times two, Pixie Lara, W Decker, and we got ten seconds, everybody. Hi, Mr. Cowley. Good to have you back, buddy. Here we go. Here we go with the final half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Good to have you with us. We talk the UFO report, or pardon me, the cryptid report. Reminder to all of you that if you've missed most of this show or others, our archives are always free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the newswire. Check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on Patreon in the Space Travelers Club. Here we go again. UFO Encrypted Report with Travis Willier Mustos. And we're glad to have you here, Travis. And you were talking about alien abductions within First Nations. And let's continue with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's been a lot of. Uh... A lot of crafts that's been uh, reported over the reported over the years over our reservations and uh, visiting a lot of our folks out here. Um, there's a lot of folks who uh, have had uh, very pleasant experiences for some of the beings that they've mentioned to me, especially like when it comes to the greys. Uh, they said they've had uh, very excellent experiences, even though they found them to be very uh, like um, like uh, when they were dealing with them, like some of the experiences like uh, that they were, you know. Uh, I should say going through or they like i said well bear witness to like in sense of uh just like how their ship operates and how they are on there and it, it made a lot of sense to me because of, of my encounters with a lot of them so it made like i knew that they were that they were spot on with the truth and and um but yeah they were it was kind of interesting because like they walked up right to my I, I was at a flea market and i was selling my paintings and they seen some of my paintings and they're like hey did so they come and picked you up too that's how, how the conversation began and I was like, oh, okay, like, so they come and visit you as well. And then he's like, yeah, yeah. When I was younger, they, they come and pick me up and we traveled around for about three months and every boat, every night they'd come pick me up. He said, and, and we'd go around and, and I was like, whoa, and just listening to some of his stories. And it really rang true for a lot of the experiences that I've seen on, sh- on aboard their ships or seeing with our dealing with them and, and, uh, in various levels. And, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, like. A lot of people out here, uh, even young, uh, younger people are now seeing a lot of orbs in the sky or are having visions of, of being on graphs and and um, I'm, I'm just helping them sort a lot of that out. And uh, even some of, like I said, the older folks out there have such uh, wonderful um, experiences too, uh, spiritually, ceremonially. Uh, my uncle had a, had a very interesting one. He said he, he was camped out beside the lake and, and uh, they were, it was like during the middle of the night all of a sudden, it was like a clear night and then just this water just dropped on him, like a pool of water just fell on the whole camp, put out the fire, put out, well, put out the, everything put out. And every, the guy that was sitting out there was just like, Hey, what, what, what happened? He, he freaked out. Cause, and then uh, he got up and, and um, they were looking around and they said the whole area, like around even the whole truck, the vehicle, and it was all splashed and marked out like a big circle, but eventually they walked out and it was just dry. So there'd be like no way somebody would be like throwing a whole area surface area of water on the tents and everything so his only explanation was that out of the lake the ufo came like it flew up and then all that water <laughs> when it flew away dropped on them and they just got, got just it just drenched in water everything absolutely the canvas tents and the truck and yeah so he said he's like yeah they're in our lakes they're definitely in our lake and they're flying around in the in the in the water so i'm like yeah just attacking my my necklace here give me a second i'm going wild right now just kidding anyway but yeah so uh 
other than that, like I said, they've been around and they've been, um, they've been, uh, totally, uh, like I said, interacting with our people, both, um, like, uh, just on a, a dimensional basis and also on a physical basis and also a ceremonial basis. So like, uh, just like encountering them around in the area and this, in this part of the region of the world. And, and, um, like I said, our, our, our connections with them go back, uh, centuries and thousands of years and i should say thousands of years and it's like our like i said it ties to our origin story and um, a lot of the a lot of our tales and like i said our language comes from them and it's uh it's a big uh it's a big part of our our belief as a neo and neowak and that's uh, the people of the four directions of the universe and that's uh yeah that's what i have to say there for that is there anything I love that answer. Thank you. I think that was an extremely educational answer. Uh, you know, that doesn't stop them from taking uh, people. You know, do do a lot of First Nations, when they go or are taken, do, do many choose not to come back to this planet? Or is there a contract? Fill me in on that. Yeah, there's actually uh, there's a choice. Uh, there's a choice to go, and um, even sometimes too, and uh, uh, people go through spiritually and uh, go through portals. Sometimes they don't want to come back; they'll stay on that other side. Uh, sometimes it's meant to be, like they're called there from the universe, and that's their journey, and they're part of their part of their experience to go through that and go into those dimensions and do that work over there. Because uh, some people are on a very uh, I should say on an enlightened level where they're totally connecting with the, uh, every kind of sort of being like trees. And, and um, like I said, they're like, uh, you know, they walk with, uh, they walk with certain type of, uh, they walk in different kind of, uh, I should say they don't dress like us and they, uh, they almost walk like uh, they're, they're part of their beings too. And they share that same being and they're like, uh, they can transform these, these different creatures at, at any given time. They can wear the, you know, they can wear the pelt of the, anything like a coyote and they can have a snake on them in their hair and they can have a, a, a rabbit paw around their neck and they can just be turning into these different animals all at any will. And uh, it's like, um, uh, like I said, they're, it's part of their journey and their, uh, and their, and their uh, connection to the universe. It is very much possible for people to evolve and to achieve these things in life and these, uh, these uh, connections and with the spirit world and with the universe in that sense. Uh, but yeah, it's like, um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to that. <laughs> a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of work that goes into there. Okay. I want to get some audience questions here because there's a number of them for you. And that'll pretty much fill up the hour here. Start off with Dizzy here, who is asking, is there a meaning to different colors of cryptids? eye shine like green means friendly. Red is ticked off, etc." Fill us in. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, um, it all depends. It, it really depends on the, on, on the situation and how your uh, how the connection is. Cause sometimes, uh, there will be, there will be like, uh, the dog humanoids that come and visit like, uh, like dog men, like, uh, Atomos, like they will come and visit you. And these are very galactic beings. They're their own kind of, uh, ancient race, human humanoid race that were part of like Atlantis and the ancient world. And they were, uh, they were amongst those beings that had left here through portals and different kind of means um, to different moons, habitable areas that they had in the, in the universe. So uh, as I was getting at though, these, uh, these, some of these beings are still around here though, and they do come back and they, they are around us and among us. And so, like I said, they will come and visit people and they will take like a, they, they will have that half human, half animal look, or sometimes there'll be even just a human body with a, with a wolf head. And, um, or a coyote head or however it looks like a dog man, right? Like a dog. And uh, they'll speak to you either telepathically or right straight across, like moving mouth. And, uh, and usually those are containing messages or life, uh, like life, uh, I should say, uh, like uh, things that will, that will help you in your life and um, help evolve you as a spiritual person. Maybe they'll even help uh, bring forward that energy that's like going to connect you and, and uh, really really take forward that transformation. Maybe you'll even become one too. Right. And, uh, but, uh, there's other versions of that. Like say somebody's on a very, uh, like they're, 
they're they're investigating something that's very malicious that's something that has been awakened a very dark kind of entity they're like a dark uh, reverse energy like of a dog man like you say like a um yeah like a beast you know like a dog like a like, like a darkness uh, beast then yeah that that's totally different uh uh case scenario and different kind of memes have to be taken different kind of things can be used to fight them if it if it's like uh on a physical basis, then there are different kind of weapons that can be used to fight them, like different kind of uh, crystal blades and uh, different kind of uh, blessed uh, spiritual stones and items like when I, yeah, and like, uh, even like different metals that can be blessed to destroy them. And uh, those are those are different kind of creatures and beings. And, and like in the in the wilderness, and especially in our like in our area or territory, there's many different kind of like areas and energy zones that that these beings can just portal out of or enter or walk through. And and when we're out in those frequencies and zones, we're we're just in amongst it all too. And we're just we're just another being like walking in those in those zones. And and uh, we have to be very uh, cautious and and uh, consider all the 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 different kind of dimensionals out there and just be wary of some of the scarier ones that could just walk up and like uh and just drain your soul for me like some of the spider beings and like uh or some of the taller stick looking kind of like um they're like almost like a stick kind of tree looking beings they walk around and they come walk around mainly at night too like the power of the moon and different kind of things that uh happen in, in the energy fields at night and they just walk around they tower around and can freak somebody out really deadly if you see them out there um like I said, and then they can get small too, down to like the tree peakers, right? And they're little tiny elemental beings. And like I said, tree, they could just be as small as a stump and they could be poking out around and peeking on you. And, you know, it's always like, they're always watching. All these beings are always watching. They always know when you're out there and on that spiritual world and dimension. So it's like, they're almost like, um, you're, they're almost warning you you're in their area, you know, and, and you know, uh, or if it's a good spirit, they're meaning to contact with you, you know, and that's like a whole other level. You know whether it's an element that flies out and shows you an area that's spiritually inclined that you're supposed to be at and waiting for a message or if it's like showing you these medicines or things that are going to start glowing in the night for you to find or or uh you know it's like sometimes your guides will lead you through the forest if you're lost you know um you know or you'll hear like i said there will be tree spirits that come to speak with you and these are very uh, ancient wisdoms and knowledge that you know if you're meant to hear it you're meant to hear it right you're meant to learn it and uh, carry that with you and then embody that into the universe so that you can, you know, uh, bring that healing forward for in, in that energy field. Awesome. Very awesome. Let's get to Tony in the UK who is asking, Travis, have you got a cool healing story you could tell? Uh, there's, there's tons of them. Like, uh, here's, here's a very interesting guy. Um, he, he's passed away now, but, uh, he, he was on our reserve and I was really good friends with him. I used to go play guitar with him. And, uh, every now and then back in the day, I used to, uh, share a little shot of whiskey with him, but that was back in the time. Now I don't, I don't, I don't drink any alcohol or anything like that anymore, but that was just because, uh, because I respected him. And, uh, and, uh, like, like I said, he was a very interesting guy, very spiritually, uh, inclined dude. And, and, um, he had the ability from the grass spirit he had once blessed him to, uh, the ability to uh, take off any warts that grew on anybody's hands. So, uh, but the interesting thing was uh, he, he had to be paid in grass because it was a grass spirit that gifted him that. And when you're walk a light, you can only, uh, you can only, you have to walk those certain, like, um, like say like if it's a gift and there's that kind of like a uh, agreement to it, you have to walk that agreement and you can't get any more greedy or else you'll lose that power to heal. So like, it was always a respected thing. Like in, if people knew that and they knew him and then uh, they'd go there and you'd offer him grass and he'd take off all the warts off your hands. And I know this because he, when I was a kid, he helped me with my hands and took all them off and, and I uh, paid him grass. And I knew that was real. And, uh, but yeah, that's like a very interesting little, little power and gift. And like, and then there's like other, other mystical gifts from grass. Like there was once a chief who was uh who was uh, silent in the grass and um, he was, uh, he would always uh, tie a piece of grass in his hair and he'd be running into battle and nobody would be able to see him or hear him. And, and uh, all these like little things like uh, that are very interesting with our elemental spirits that people just don't consider anymore. <laughs> all right, let's go to the next question. This one from, from Dizzy again, has Travis, that's you, 
ever heard a cryptid physically speak? Not mind speak, physically speak. Yeah, there's been like a couple times when uh, when we've heard this like wild like uh, you know they you know we hear some things in the woods just kind of like uh, scream at us and then uh, you know like uh, we've heard screaming audible screams and then audible uh, like uh, you hear Bigfoot's like oh and like uh, doing their kind of uh, calls and knocks and different kind of things and you hear different kind of uh, funny little. Uh, like i don't know it sounds like they almost like i said there are like humans out there um you know there could be the that could be even the small little uh like i said the troll like folk out there that live out there they have the small little pointy nose and they walk around out there in the woods but um like i've heard little people i've heard the little people talking and i've heard the heard them laughing at me and everything like you know like uh <laughs> you know it's it's a very interesting feeling when you, you hear that kind of uh mystical heightened frequency little giggles and they're springing around in the woods not running away from me because they were messing around with you at night um you know it's it's you know there's been that so and like i said and then other than that like tell like uh the whole uh, spiritual thing that happens like in in that on that plane and uh yeah yeah and the, also like buffalo animals like not even like um sometimes it's um like raiding our ceremonies and then there'll be just a buffalo that just comes and breathes like right in your face it's like like you know or like a uh, eagle feathers and wings that just land giant eagle raiding our lodge or in the sweat lodges and shake the whole sweat lodge and everything uh, so like you know it's been uh yeah there's been quite a few uh things that i'm probably even forgetting some right now Right on. All right. Let's get to another question here from Dizzy again. Travis, have you ever crossed over an earthbound spirit? If so, how do you do it? All right. Uh, those, those are usually um, in times of when you're, when you're aligning yourself in the universal connection in that, in that, uh, in that energy field and you're in that more heightened, uh, frequency, natural frequency in the real, real universal energy. And, uh, you start to, uh, experience these and you start to, um, <clears throat> you start to make these connections, but like, as for, um, like earth cross with the earthbound spirit, it's more like you're, it's like a moment in time that's meant for like in that part of like in that moment of the universe to happen, you know, if that connection is meant to be, it will meant, it will be meant to be, you know, and, uh, that's just, um, how you, how you're aligning for it is like, you're you're preparing for that in the in the, in the universe and when it's meant to happen it will happen when you're out there all right let's go to another question here from our audience let's go to jerry travis are you endowed with super strength when fighting monsters uh astrally yes and on a spiritual level yes because when you're on uh when you're with the working with the lighter frequency lighter beings uh, none of the darker spirits have any like sort of strength over you. Uh, but when it comes to, uh, out in the wild, out in the, out in physical world, there's like a lot more, um, things that go into play, um, such as like, uh, blessed spiritual items and blessed, uh, different kind of, uh, things that help me out in that, uh, in that, in, in those settings in this physical world. And, uh, and also to, uh, like I said, a lot of them are very, very dangerous if they are in those, those, uh, other stages of involvement then then there's other precautionary things that have to be taken into consideration before going in there but uh yeah yeah no uh sometimes you do have to call upon uh, uh a higher frequency to assist you in that sense but it is uh it is all upon the situation in time and space all right let's go to another question here this one from jerry again have you ever seen an owl or a skunk or something and it had imparted some sort of mystical wisdom all right um my uncle uh told me a lot about uh about the wisdom of the owls and and um he told me uh there was one time there was a ceremony that was hosted over here and uh the chief and council had offered him uh they had offered him uh, some money, like they're like, we'll pay you if you go and get these animals, and we'll and uh, we'll give you uh, tobacco and all this stuff, and for our ceremony. So he went and he went and did that. He went and got the animals, and um, 
And uh, sure enough, they, they didn't pay him. And then they also didn't do the offerings right for the ceremony. So then uh, all of a sudden, when he went back home that night, there was an owl waiting for him on his back porch. And the owl was like, all right, well, you didn't do the offering right. So I'm going to be taking uh, someone of your family. Like, I'm going to be taking, taking one of your loved ones from you. And uh, he's like, he's like, oh, no, that wasn't me. Like, uh, that that was them. Like, I, I filled out my my end of their, their they, they took the, they offered, you know, they, I have my offering for the stuff and I'll go leave that for you. And, and I'm sorry, he had to go and pray, he had to pray to it. And eventually the, the owl was like, uh, really upset with those other folk that didn't give the offerings. And sure enough, some of those, some of those people's family died because of the, their negligence to offering that, uh, the spirits and, and, uh, the offerings to the universe, right. It was, it wasn't, uh, wasn't done right. So a lot of things, uh, bad things could happen. And that's another thing too. If like, if you're not meant to be, uh, messing around with a lot of those things, like you really shouldn't be, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, a you gotta really, uh, you gotta really be honest and really walk that road and really walk that life of, uh, of, um, of reality because a lot of these beings like i said they're it's all about its connection through the universe and respect to that of the universe and um but yeah like uh it, because like you know uh there's good you you will fly with the good and you walk with the good and light happens and that's like uh that's usually the flow of the universe but like when you start to do things bad and you get greedy then it starts to create a bad reverse energy negative energy and some of these beings start to get angry and they have both they have both sides eh? they have good and they have a bad side too right so you gotta like, uh, you know, you gotta really respect how you walk in this life and respect all the elements and the animals and plants and earth and universe and stars and uh, ETs and extra, well, I mean like the ultra terrestrial beings and, and all these uh, dimensions that are surrounding all of us. Cause it's very important that all of our connections to it. Travis, will you moose this? we got about 30 seconds. Let everybody know where they can find your books and more information. Yeah, I just released a new book, uh, Pleiadian Guidance, which is a, a sci-fi tale. It's not like a, a guidance workbook, but it's like a sci-fi tale that's loaded with like well over 70 uh, full uh, fully colored sketches and, and paintings that I've done that are all done by me. They're, it's a it's a wonderful art piece. Uh, these are humanoid beings uh, from across the galaxy. There's a lot of Pleiadians and Andromedan uh, Galactic Alliance uh, Federation. And um, you will see a lot of that and hear a lot about their histories and the people and everything in that book. You can find it on Amazon amongst uh, Pleiadians called Me and My Heart. And uh, yeah, you uh, landing cards on YouTube. Check it out. Woo! Thank you, everybody. Oh, yeah. News to us, everybody, as we got Mr. Ron Bubblefoot Ball rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio. Rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at work, at home, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight. YouTube, Twitch, LGAP, Facebook, Streaker. That's good stuff tonight, man. Good Whoa. stuff. <laughs> Hardy eats. Paul Geronimo, welcome to SOR chat. How are you doing? That was excellent, dude. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you to all the listeners out there and the viewers out there watching, uh, listening now and watching in the future. It was it was such a pleasure to be on tonight, Dave. And uh, thank you for inviting me once again. <laughs> oh, we'll talk.